Chapter 126, Thor's Inquiry What are you looking at me for? I don't even know the people of Chitori. Because of Natasha's turn back, Steve Roger, Dr. Banner, and the others also turned to look at him. If Loki has an army from outer space, he needs a stable space portal, so he kidnaps Dr. Sikovic. Ever since he met Roger on the Sky Carrier, Dr. Banner had been deliberately avoiding dealing with Roger, so he pulled the topic back to normal. Sikovic. Thor suddenly asked. He is a celestial physics doctor. Dr. Banner explained. He is my friend. I don't know what method Loki used to control him. There is also one of our agents. Natasha added silently. I want to know how Loki could surrender so easily. He can't command the army here. For Loki to choose to surrender so easily, Steve Roger had always felt that something was not right. On the Quinjet, he had asked Roger and Tony about their views, but they obviously did not care about this. I think we should not focus on Loki. This guy is a madman. He can tell at a glance. Dr. Banner said his opinion. Until now, he still felt that Loki's meaningful smile was a little scary. Be careful with what you say. No matter how rude and unreasonable Loki is, he is still Asgard I am. He is my younger brother. After hearing Dr. Banner's evaluation of Loki, Thor could not help but defend Loki. He killed 80 people in two days. Natasha added silently. He is adopted. Thor immediately explained. Roger did not participate in the discussion between them. His mind was now filled with the reason why the commission had not been completed, and why there was no mind stone in the scepter given by Thanos. How about throwing Loki out and then catching him back? A crazy idea began to form in his mind. Just as he was considering the feasibility of this plan, Tony and Carlson came to the bridge. At the same time, they said to Dr. Banner, the iridium element can be used as a stabilizer to prevent the portal from collapsing, just like what S.H.I.E.L.D. did before. Big guy, don't hold grudges. Your two hammers are very powerful. When passing by Thor, Tony patted Thor's muscular shoulder and continued to walk toward the commander position of the bridge. The element of iridium can allow Loki to expand the portal as he wishes and maintain it for a long time. Tony said as he walked. Soon, he arrived at the commander position of Nick Fury. He continued, raise the rear mast and turn the sails. When the staff in the bridge turned to look at Tony, he suddenly pointed to one of the staff members and said, that person is playing small b. He thought that no one else could see him, but I saw him. Tony's buffoonery instantly swept away the depressing atmosphere in the bridge. How can Fury see the two screens? Tony used his hand to block his left eye and tried it. Then he asked the Hilton worker behind him. Turn around. Other raw materials can be easily obtained by Agent Barton. He only lacks one main component, which is energy. Some kind of high-density energy is used to activate the Tesseract. After randomly clicking on the screen a few times, Tony said with a casual face. Then, when he turned around, he put a small instrument that looked like a snail on the pillar under the screen. Since when did you study thermal nuclear celestial physics? Asked the worker. After hearing the worker, Roger sighed helplessly. You shouldn't have asked this question. It made everyone look like they hadn't graduated from primary school. Just last night. Resources, Dr. Segwell's notes, and some extractive papers, haven't you done your homework in advance? Thor said in a slightly exaggerated tone. Does Loki need any specific energy? Steve Roger ignored Tony's exaggerated expression and asked quietly. He has to heat the Tesseract to more than 100 million degrees before it can surpass Kulam. Dr. Banner immediately gave an answer. Unless Sergi has already thought of a way to stabilize the quantum tunnel. Tony added as he walked towards Dr. Banner. If he really wants to come out, he can use any reactor to complete the particle fusion. Dr. Banner continued. There's finally someone who can speak the human language. You call this human speech? Steve Roger ridiculed. Compared to Tony and Dr. Banner, everyone present was a primary school student who had yet to graduate. I'm very happy to meet you, Dr. Banner. Your research in the anti-electronic collision field is really unparalleled. Moreover, I feel that you have lost control and transformed into the Hulk's appearance. It's amazing. Regarding the first half of Tony's words, Dr. Banner was quite happy, but the second half. Thanks for the compliment. Dr. Banner replied helplessly. Dr. Banner's goal this time is to track the Tesseract. I hope you can find it with him. 
Nick Fury returned to the bridge and interrupted Tony's crazy thoughts. When Tony and Dr. Banner went to the laboratory, Thor came to Roger and asked him, Why are you here? I accepted someone else's request, so I came. Roger casually replied. Although Loki did something wrong, no matter what, he is still Asgard I am. He is my younger brother, so I hope you can help me bring him back. The purpose of Thor's trip was to find the Tesseract and bring Loki back to Asgard. But if Roger stopped him, he felt that it would be difficult for him to take Loki away. Therefore, he needed to confirm Roger's attitude in advance so that things would not develop in the worst direction. No problem. But after I complete the commission, I happen to have something I need your help with. Of course, the commission that Roger mentioned was not the shield. Commission. If it was the shield. Commission, it would be considered complete from the moment Loki boarded the Sky Space Carrier. The commission he was talking about now was the Systems Commission. Before the Systems Commission state was completed, he would not let anyone take Loki away. That was a whole 200 ninja coins. Moreover, he had never taken the initiative to give up on the commission. What is it? As long as Roger did not stop him from taking Loki away, everything else was fine. It did not matter if it was earlier or later. I want to know the whereabouts of the Mind Stone. Just as Roger finished speaking, Thor's expression became a bit ugly. Thor was very clear about what kind of thing the Mind Stone was, but he never thought that Roger would actually want to know the whereabouts of the Mind Stone. Moreover, with his understanding of Roger, if Roger wanted to know the whereabouts of a certain item, it would often mean that he was determined to obtain it. Chapter 127, The Wooden Dungeon You want to find the Mind Stone? This is not a power that humans can control. It will only bring disaster. Thor felt that he needed to stop Roger's dangerous idea. It was one of the six Infinity Stones, one of the most dangerous powers in the universe. I just want to know the whereabouts of the Mind Stone. I am not arrogant enough to control the Mind Stone. Roger knew what Thor was worried about, but his worries were unnecessary. I can try my best to ask around, but I don't have too much hope. Although he did not know what Roger wanted to do, out of trust in Roger, Thor finally agreed. After reaching cooperation with Thor, Roger left the bridge and returned to the room Nick Fury had arranged for him. The only thing he was good at was fighting. As for those matters, he just had to leave them to the professionals. Tony and Banner were trying to find a way to determine the whereabouts of Tesseract in the universe. Natasha went to Loki's VIP presidential suite to see if she could find any useful information from Loki. As for Steve Roger, in Roger's perception, he was looking for something in the Mothership's secret warehouse. Thor, like Roger, had nothing to do. However, one of them chose to go back to his room to sleep, while the other stayed on the bridge. However, not long after he laid down, he felt an unusual energy fluctuation. To be precise, it was magic fluctuation. Was this recognition? The Mind Stone is gone. Can this scepter still have the effect of enchanting the mind? After sensing this sudden energy fluctuation, Roger could only helplessly end his rest time and walk towards Dr. Banner's laboratory. When he arrived at the laboratory, he saw Tony and the others who were arguing, as well as Dr. Banner who had unconsciously picked up the scepter. Looking at Tony and the others who were making a ruckus, Roger slightly frowned and then mobilized the chakra in his body. Although he didn't know exactly how the scepter bewitched Tony and the others, he had a very simple and crude way to crack it. Everyone, calm down. When Tony and the others all looked at him, Roger's eyes instantly turned into Sharingan. The Sharingan, Genjutsu. The moment they saw Roger's eyes, Tony and the others were pulled into the illusion by Roger. However, he did not do anything to them. A few seconds later, he took the initiative to get rid of Genjutsu. When the effect of Genjutsu disappeared, Tony and the others returned to their senses and realized that something was wrong with them. Try to stay away from that scepter. Roger reminded him warmly. At this time, the monitoring device in the corner of the laboratory suddenly issued a burst of rapid alarm. The compatibility of the energy signal is 100. Looking at the alarm information and location displayed on the screen, Dr. Banner subconsciously took off his glasses. Boom! A strong explosion sounded, and the entire helicarrier shook violently. Although this sudden explosion did not directly blow up the helicarrier's flying engine, it also successfully stopped the third engine. Not only that, but because the location of the laboratory was very close to the third engine, the explosion spread to the laboratory without any suspense, creating a large hole in the floor of the laboratory. 
Tony, Steve Rogers and Thor were blown away by the explosion, while Roger, Banner, Natasha, and the others directly fell into the next layer of the laboratory. This explosion came at the right time. The moment the explosion sounded, Roger covered himself with a layer of chakra, so he was not hurt at this time. Are you all right? After removing the metal tubes and metal plates on Natasha and Dr. Banner, Roger asked about their condition. I'm fine. Although she looked a little embarrassed, Natasha did not suffer any obvious injuries. She was only pressed by the metal tubes. Compared to Natasha, Dr. Banner was much more unlucky. Not only did he suffer more injuries, but what was even more troublesome was that he could no longer control his emotions. Leave this place first. Leave Banner to me. Dr. Banner's skin began to rapidly turn green and his body expanded. His clothes were also directly stuffed into rags by his body. Looking at Dr. Banner who was transforming, Natasha did not hesitate and immediately left. Roger did not stop Banner from transforming. Moreover, to him, even if Banner transformed into the Hulk, the result would not change at all. Ah! After letting out a painful howl, Dr. Banner completely disappeared and was replaced by the muscular Hulk. I did not expect that we would meet again under such circumstances. Roger silently looked at the Hulk, who had completely lost his mind, and sighed helplessly. If possible, he wanted to meet the Hulk who could communicate more. When Roger was sizing up the Hulk, the Hulk also found the little guy in front of him. Although the Hulk had completely lost his mind now, when he saw Roger, he seemed to remember something. Then, in the next second, the Hulk dashed towards Roger. Big Ball Ray's Nan. The moment Hulk ran in front of him, Roger did not hesitate. His right hand directly condensed out Big Ball Ray's Nan. Boom! Big Ball Ray's Nan and the Hulk's right fists collided fiercely, and a strong explosion sounded. The Hulk shattered Roger's Big Ball Ray's Nan, but the Hulk himself was also sent flying by Big Ball Ray's Nan. It was not until he smashed through several layers of walls that the Hulk, who was sent flying, finally stopped. Big guy, calm down. I don't want to hit you with wooden people anymore. Before the Hulk, who was sent flying, could stand up, Roger used body flickering technique to come in front of him. The Hulk gave his answer to Roger's persuasion. The Hulk jumped up and pounced towards Roger like a tiger pouncing on its prey. Why didn't he listen to his advice? With just one body flickering technique, Roger avoided the Hulk's attack. After dodging the Hulk's attack, Roger extended his right hand toward the Hulk. Would release great forest art. Five wooden vines gushed out from Roger's right hand and pounced toward the Hulk like five pythons. Then, they bound the Hulk tightly. Although the great forest art was not as effective as wood dragon technique's ability to absorb the target's physical strength and energy, compared to the wood dragon technique, the effect of the great forest art was better. It was also more flexible when used. In just an instant, the Hulk was completely wrapped up by the wooden vines, like a super large green dumpling. Big guy, I will say it one last time. Calm down. Chapter 128, The Hulk From a certain point of view, Roger still quite liked the Hulk. Although the Hulk was not as smart as Banner, this was also one of his advantages. Banner was too intelligent, which made it easy for him to think too much sometimes. The Hulk was different. If he could obtain the Hulk's recognition, he would not hesitate even if you asked him to challenge the flame giant, Sir Tour. Therefore, if they were friends, Roger preferred to be friends with people like the Hulk. However, at this time, the Hulk obviously had no intention of becoming friends with him. After being entangled by Wood Release's great forest art, not only did the Hulk not calm down at all, he became even more irritable. Kaka. The vines that were wrapped around the Hulk began to show signs of breaking under his violent struggle. AI. I really don't want to hit you with wooden people anymore. Although he said this, Roger still silently used wood release, wood human technique. Because he was on top of the heli carrier, he could not summon wooden sculpture directly from the ground like before. However, this did not affect his use of the wood human technique. If he could not use wood release after leaving the earth, then wood release would be too lacking in the face. Under Roger's control, a piece of wood as thick as an arm grew out from his left shoulder. Under the nourishment of Chakra, this piece of wood began to rapidly grow larger. In just one or two seconds, this piece of wood had grown into a three-meter-tall wooden sculpture. When this wooden sculpture with a hooked nose and a long hooked nose appeared, apart from wood release, Roger dispelled the great forest art and restored his right hand to its original state. At the same time, 
he also restored the Hulk's freedom. The Hulk finally got rid of the shackles of the wooden vines, but in the next second, wooden sculpture had already rushed to his front, giving him a beautiful and powerful uppercut. Boom! Caught off guard, the Hulk was sent flying by a single punch from wooden sculpture, and his entire body was sent flying by a meter. However, wooden sculpture's attack was not limited to just this. Before the Hulk, who was in the air, landed on the ground, Wooden Sculpture displayed his most proficient physical super-degree fist technique of Gatling Gun. Aura 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 The Hulk was like a green super-large sandbag, enduring Wooden Sculpture's attack. The dull sound of impact resounded throughout the surrounding area. While controlling Wooden Sculpture, Roger used the sensing technique to sense the situation on the heli carrier. Steve Roger and Tony were repairing the third engine of the strike. Motherfucker Nick Fury and Agent Hill were fighting the intruders on the bridge and Thor was in Loki's VIP presidential suite. Wait a minute. Why did Thor enter Loki's room? Although Thor and Loki were currently in the same area, their positions were reversed. Thor was inside the presidential suite while Loki was outside the presidential suite. Although he did not know what Thor and Loki had done previously, judging from the current situation, it was clear that Thor had fallen into Loki's trap again. If it was just the last time, then it was fine. However, Thor's situation clearly caused him to fall into the same pit one after another. He didn't know if Loki had some hidden passive skill, which caused Thor to involuntarily lower his IQ every time he saw him. After sighing helplessly, Roger focused his attention on Natasha. At this time, Natasha was not idle. She was now fighting with Hawkeye. Although Barton did not have any superpower, he was an archer who was good at long-range attacks. But this did not mean that he was not good at melee combat. How could someone who could become a top agent not be good at melee combat? After confirming the situation on the mothership, Roger turned his attention back to the Hulk. Because he had lost his mind, the Hulk did not attack Roger. Instead, he vented all his anger on wooden sculpture. Bang! 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 Looking at the Hulk and wooden sculpture who were fighting like two barbarians, Roger stretched out his right hand again. With the Hulk's physical strength, even if they exchanged blows for a day, it would not be a problem. However, Roger did not intend to waste so much time on the Hulk. Wood release, wood dragon technique. A piece of wood grew out of Roger's right hand again. However, this time, it was no longer a wooden vine. Instead, it was a long, hooked nose wooden dragon. When this long hooked nose wooden dragon first appeared, it was only as thick as Roger's arm. But as his body extended, the long hook nose wooden dragon's body size also rapidly grew. When wooden dragon arrived in front of the Hulk, wooden dragon's body had already expanded to 30 to 40 centimeters thick. The Hulk, who was completely attracted by wooden sculpture, did not notice the arrival of the wooden dragon. Moreover, with his current irrational state, even if he found wooden dragon, he might not avoid it. Without any suspense, the long hook nose wooden dragon tightly wrapped around the Hulk's body like a python and then began to absorb the Hulk's physical strength. At the same time, Wooden Sculpture did not stop his attack. The Hulk's body was already entangled by Wooden Dragon, so the target of Wooden Sculpture's attack became the Hulk's big green head. Bang 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 bang! After controlling Wooden Sculpture to ruthlessly hit the Hulk's head a few times, Roger got rid of Wood Human Technique. Although the Hulk had rough skin and thick flesh, and his recovery ability was not bad, it was still a bit too cruel to hit someone in the head. Although he had lost his mind now, Roger still couldn't bear it. After being entangled by Wooden Dragon, there was only one outcome for the Hulk, which was that he had no ability to resist and was squeezed dry. Although the Hulk was still struggling, Roger turned around and left, completely ignoring the Hulk's situation. In any case, the Hulk's fate was already decided. It didn't matter whether he stayed or not. Moreover, he had more important things to deal with right now. At this time, next to Loki's presidential suite, Carlson was holding an energy weapon that looked very intimidating and pointing at Loki on the control panel. If Loki pressed the button, Thor, who was locked in the cage, would experience a new experience of falling from 9,000 meters vertically. Do you like this? Because of the destroyer you sent, we developed this prototype machine. I don't know its power. Do you want to try? Carlson pointed the huge repulsor at Loki and said with a serious face. Under the threat of Carlson, Loki left the control panel slightly, and the next second, he disappeared. It was another illusion. 
It was unknown when Loki had arrived behind Kalsen. The scepter in his hand directly stabbed toward Kalsen's back. Just as the sickle-like sharp blade at the top of the scepter was about to stab into Kalsen's back, the scepter that was stabbing forward suddenly stopped. You sure have guts. You actually want to stab my former customer to death in front of me. Through the coordinates of the Flying Thunder God technique on Loki, Roger was the first to teleport over and grab the scepter in Loki's hand. Chapter 129, A New Wood Release Technique It was only now that Kalsen discovered that Loki had appeared behind him, and he had almost stabbed himself in the heart. Just a little more and he would have to report to death. Thinking of this, Kalsen could not help but break out in a cold sweat. Loki had never expected that Roger would rush over at this time. According to the plan, at this time, Roger was already stopping the Hulk who had lost his mind. The Hulk was solved so quickly. This was not scientific. Loki was not a person like Thor who acted blindly when his mind was hot. Since he chose to surrender, he naturally made full preparations and plans. But now, the most important Hulk in the plan did not play a role as expected. The Hulk did not destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. As he had planned, nor did he take control of Roger and the others, nor did he directly destroy S.H.I.E.L.D.'s team from the inside. If I said that this was just a joke, would you believe it? Loki pulled back his scepter. After finding that the scepter did not move, he took the initiative to let go of the right hand holding the scepter and silently retreated a few steps. Do you think I will believe you? After tossing the scepter to Kalsen, Roger slowly walked towards Loki. If he hadn't used Flying Thunder God technique in time to rush over, Kalsen would have been lying on the ground and bleeding profusely. Wait. Maybe we can discuss it. If you help me conquer the Earth, I can give you half of the Earth and make you the real king. How about it? Although Loki had never really fought with Roger, he knew very well that if they fought, the one who would lose would definitely be him. Since he couldn't win, it was reasonable for him to give way appropriately. Half of Earth, this was definitely a very tempting bargaining chip. Not interested. Roger rejected Loki's suggestion without even thinking about it. What a joke, if Earth was so easy to conquer, then this place would not be Earth. Loki had no idea how many terrifying existences were hidden in this seemingly unremarkable Earth. Not to mention that he only had one Chitauri army, even if Thanos led all of his troops, it would be impossible to conquer Earth. Is that so? That's such a pity. Although he did not expect Roger to directly agree to his proposal from the beginning, after hearing Roger's refusal without hesitation, Loki still felt sorry. Why didn't he have someone as powerful as Roger on his side? If Roger was willing to stand on his side, then everything would become much simpler. However, there were not many ifs in this world, so Loki could only pull out his only remaining weapon, a knife that was more than 10 centimeters long. There was no one who could force a mage to fight someone with a knife. However, at this time, Loki's subordinates suddenly rushed over. Although Hawkeye was entangled with Natasha, Hawkeye was not the only one who invaded Heli Carrier at this time. After seeing Roger and Kalsen, these mercenaries did not hesitate and directly pulled the trigger. Bang! 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 The intense gunfire sounded, and the bullets flew toward Roger and Kalsen as if they were free. If he was alone, Roger would be able to leave safely before the bullets hit him. But now, he still needed to take care of Kalsen. Wood release. Pieces of wood quickly gushed out from Roger's body and instantly formed a curved arch that enveloped him and Kalsen. Without exception, all of the bullets that flew over hit the hemispherical curved wall. There was no doubt about the power of the bullets, but the wood that formed the wooden wall was no ordinary wood either. The sounds of collisions continued to ring out. Although the mercenaries' shots were dense and accurate, they were unable to penetrate the defense of the wooden wall. You can stay here. I will deal with the people outside. After saying that, Roger used body flickering technique to leave the wooden wall. After mastering the sage mode of Shikotsu Forest, the wood release ninjutsu he had mastered had also increased a lot. Nativity of the World Tree, the Great Forest Art, the Wood Wall. These were all the new ninjutsu he had learned after he had mastered sage mode. In addition to this ninjutsu, he had also mastered a ninjutsu that he liked more but never used in actual combat. The reason was very simple, because that ninjutsu was a little too cruel. After using body flickering technique to leave the defensive range of the ingot wall, Roger quickly glanced at the mercenaries who were attacking. Seven people. After confirming the number of enemies, Roger decisively used the ninjutsu which had never been used in actual combat. Wood release, 
cutting technique. A long wooden thorn that was dozens of centimeters long grew from his right arm and connected with his right arm like a dagger. Then, Roger flashed to the front of these mercenaries like a ghost. Chi. The wooden spike on Roger's right arm stabbed into the chest of a mercenary like lightning. At the same time, more than ten wooden spikes as thick as an arm instantly gushed out from the mercenary's body, instantly ending the mercenary's life. For mercenaries, death was not a rare thing. However, the scene in front of them was still beyond their imagination. Being completely pierced by the wooden spikes growing out of his body, this kind of death was cruel and shocking. Not only were the mercenaries frightened, even Loki and Thor could not help but gasp when they saw this scene. Although they hadn't personally experienced the feeling of having more than ten wooden thorns growing out of their bodies, they could imagine the extreme pain just by looking at the hedgehog-like mercenary. After solving the first target, Roger didn't stop his slaughter and continued to attack the remaining six mercenaries. The six mercenaries only lasted for six seconds. After all these mercenaries died, Roger finally solved the cutting technique. The removal of the cutting technique would not cause the wooden thorns in the bodies of these mercenaries to disappear. They still maintained that miserable death. Although these mercenaries did not bring any hope for Loki to win, they still bought Loki a few precious seconds. When Roger killed the mercenaries, Loki once again returned to the control panel and opened the circular hatch under the cage. The moment the cabin door was opened, a strong airflow whistled over, and the temperature began to drop rapidly. After the third engine went on strike, Heli Carrier had already begun to descend rapidly, but even so, Heli Carrier was still in the air several thousand meters high. You really are a monster. Loki said to Roger helplessly. Then, under the gaze of Roger, Thor, and the others, he jumped down from the open cabin door. Chapter 130, Flying with the Fan Was this guy addicted to jumping? Last time, he jumped at Bifrest, and this time, he jumped at Heli Carrier. It had to be said that Loki's action was very decisive and surprising. Seeing Loki falling rapidly and becoming smaller and smaller, Roger used sensing technique to sense for a few seconds. Then, he arrived at the control panel and directly closed the hatch. After being sent to Roger twice in a row, no matter how slow Loki's reaction was, he realized that something was wrong. Although he could not directly erase Flying Thunder God's formula, it was not difficult to interfere with the space coordinates that Flying Thunder God's formula sent out. If he was given enough time, he could even directly create a small space barrier to completely isolate Flying Thunder God's formula. Loki finally showed off his mage nature a little, putting an end to the possibility that Roger would be sent to the face again. Not long after Loki jumped off the ship, the other intruders on Helicarrier's ship were also eliminated by S.H.I.E.L.D. One by one. Helicarrier regained his calm once again. There are some things that if we don't hurry up and do, we might never have the chance to do it again in the future. Go ask Steve Roger for his autograph. Carlson was a loyal fan of Steve Roger, and for this reason, he had especially spent a few years collecting a set of unique Captain America card set. In the eyes of others, it was very childish behavior for a man in his 40s or 50s to collect such cards. But in the eyes of Roger, this was not childish. This was a man's initial heart, a dream worthy of respect. Thank you. After hearing Roger's words, Carlson was stunned for a moment and then thanked Roger with great sincerity. When Carlson left with the prototype machine weapon and the scepter, Roger released Thor from the special prison cell. How many times has it been? You can't be like this every time you see Loki. For Thor to always fall for Loki's tricks, Roger had no choice but to be helpless. He is my younger brother. Thor replied silently. Half an hour later, Roger, Thor, and the others returned to the bridge. Apart from Dr. Banner, who had not appeared because he was unconscious, everyone else was present. Even Hawkeye, who had just regained consciousness, was present. Loki successfully escaped. The whereabouts of Tesseract in the universe is still unknown. The mothership engine is damaged, the communication is cut off. 28 agents died, 15 maintenance personnel died, and many internal parts of the mothership were damaged. Nick Fury's face was as dim as his skin color at this time. We are indeed using the Tesseract to develop weapons, but I did not put all the hope on this because I have a more daring plan. I have an idea, the Avengers plan, which both Stark and Roger know. I want to gather some people with outstanding abilities and see if the team they form can be stronger. I want to see if they can fight side by side at the critical moment and win the war that we can't win. Now it seems that this idea is outdated. We have lost the initiative. 
we can only watch Loki start the war. After that, Nick Fury left the bridge directly, and the atmosphere on the bridge became more and more depressing. Although Loki's plan did not achieve the expected effect, it was not completely a failure. He successfully bought some time for himself. Loki should be in New York now. He has a performance personality. He needs an audience and a towering monument. It is best to have his name engraved on it. Looking at the silent crowd, Roger reminded and glanced at Tony at the same time. Although Tony was not a typical acting personality, Roger was sure that he knew what he was talking about. Arc Reactor Loki needs a powerful energy source to successfully open Tesseract. If Tony still could not hear Roger's reminder, then he was not Tony. New York Stark Building Although it was possible for Loki to activate Tesseract in other places, based on the current situation, Stark Building was still Loki's first choice. Tony, you repair the armor as soon as possible. The others will go with me in the Kun style. At the same time, bring Dr. Banner. We need his strength. Steve Roger instinctively began to arrange tasks. Then, he saw everyone looking at him. I have a more convenient method. If you do not mind, I can take you there. Although the Quinjet's flying speed was not slow, compared to flying Thunder God technique, Quinjet was like a younger brother. After more than ten minutes, the people who were ready arrived at the hangar. Under Roger's signal, Steve Roger and the others held the hands of the people next to them and looked at Roger with confusion. Don't blink. This kind of experience is not common. After grabbing Tony's shoulder, Roger finally reminded him and then began to sense Flying Thunder God's formula in New York. After locking onto one of Flying Thunder God's formula, he decisively used Flying Thunder God technique. In just a moment, their figures disappeared into the hangar. The next second, they were sent to the roof of a building near Stark Building. Although Captain America and the others had raised their spirits to 120, they did not see any strange phenomenon. The only thing they felt was that they experienced an extremely short period of loss in an instant, and then they were sent to New York. The trip is over. I hope everyone will be on this trip. Before Roger finished speaking, a blue and white energy pillar shot out from the roof of Stark Building. When this energy pillar flew up to a thousand meters in the sky, a huge circular portal appeared in the blue sky, and many Chitauri soldiers flew out like locusts. The war has begun. Seeing this scene in front of them, Everyone had the same thought in their minds. When Chitori appeared, Tony and Thor immediately flew towards Stark Building. Tony wanted to return to the building to change his clothes, and Thor wanted to defeat Loki as soon as possible. When only two flying units were left, Roger summoned Kusanagi Sword and Gunbei Uchiwa and then threw the fan out. Steve Roger and others were still wondering why Roger threw out the weapon, and then they saw a scene that completely did not conform to the laws of physics. The fan that Roger threw out did not fall as they had imagined. Instead, it drew a beautiful arc in the air and then flew back to Roger. Gunbei Uchiwa was given the same flying ability as Mjol nearby Odin. As long as Odin was alive, the enchantment effect would not disappear. Roger did not like the way Thor flew with Mjol near, so he adopted another way of flight. Flying with the Fan Chapter 131, Loki and the Enemies Under the gaze of Steve Roger and others, Roger stepped on Gunbei Uchiwa and flew straight toward Stark Building. Flying on a group fan, although it looked a little strange, it had to be said that this feeling was very cool. When Roger came to Stark Building, the first thing he saw was Thor beating Loki. Yes, the real beating. At this moment, Thor had no intention of holding back at all. Mjolnir continued to smash toward Loki. Although Loki only had too many daggers in his hands, he displayed extremely outstanding combat skills. With those mysterious and unpredictable magic, Loki had even suppressed Thor in close combat. Doppelganger, illusion, invisibility, blind, slow. One spell after another was continuously thrown out by Loki, neutralizing Thor's thunderous attacks. Only now did Loki truly display all of his abilities as a mage. While Loki and Thor were fighting, Tony finally finished changing his clothes and put on the latest Mark VII Iron Man suit. After putting on Mark VII, Tony did not hesitate and immediately joined the battle between Loki and Thor. With the addition of Tony, Loki, who had been fighting with Thor, suddenly felt a lot more pressure, and he kept retreating. Roger did not join their battle but flew directly to Space Stone. Now that Mind Stone was nowhere to be found, the Space Stone was undoubtedly the most valuable target on the entire battlefield and the key to deciding when the war would end. As long as the Space Gem opened the portal, 
Chitori's army would not be able to directly invade Earth from distant outer space, and the war would come to an end in advance. Turn it off, Dr. Jervy. After activating the space gem, Dr. Jervy did not leave this place. Instead, he looked at the space stone in front of him with a longing expression. It's too late. We can't stop now. It has something for us to see, a new universe. Dr. Jervy ignored Roger's request, his eyes still shining with a strange light blue light. Up to you. Although he had dealt with Dr. Jervy before, now was obviously not the time to reminisce about old times. Since Dr. Jervy was not willing to make a move, then he would do it himself. Roger pulled out the sword of Kusanagi from his waist and then used Chidori Katana. When Kusanagi's sword was wrapped in lightning, Roger jumped off the fan and directly stabbed the space stone in his hand. The invincible sword of Kusanagi did not stab the space gem as he wished. A barrier made entirely of energy blocked the tip of Kusanagi's sword. It could not be pierced. The moment Kusanagi's sword came into contact with this energy barrier, Roger came to a conclusion. This layer of space barrier looked only a few centimeters thick, but it contained an incomparably abundant amount of space energy. Simply put, this layer of space barrier was a space barrier created by the space gem, and it was also the type that was extremely sturdy. Unless there was a high-grade energy that was of the same nature as the space gem, one could only use brute force to break through this layer of space barrier. After thinking for a few seconds, Roger came in front of Dr. Jervy and directly cast a Genjutsu, Sharingan at the doctor. When Genjutsu, Sharingan was released, the doctor's consciousness returned to normal. Genjutsu, who used the Sharingan, forcibly covered or erased the influence Loki exerted. After recovering his true self-consciousness, Dr. Jervy first glanced at New York, which had fallen into the flames of war, and then said with regret, Scepter, Loki's scepter can break through Tesseract's energy barrier. I have an insurance device that can cut off the energy of Space Stone. Impossible, Loki's scepter can't do this. Although the scepter also contains a strong energy, that energy can't compete with the energy of the barrier at all. It was not that Roger did not believe in Dr. Jervy. He had recognized the energy in the scepter before, so he was very sure that the scepter could not break through the barrier. You should be talking about one of Loki's scepters. He has two scepters. Two scepters? Roger found that he had overlooked something. The last time he used Genjutsu to get information from Loki that the scepter was from Thanos. From Loki's performance at that time, this information was true. The scepter came from Thanos, but the scepter given by Thanos was not one but two. Inertial thinking is unacceptable. He always thought that there was only one scepter so he only considered whether the scepter was real or whether it was forged by Loki. Therefore, he never thought that Thanos might give more than one scepter. If he could travel to this world, then it was not impossible for Thanos to give Loki two scepters. Thinking of this, he sighed helplessly and then looked at Loki who was fighting against two. This was not a game or a movie. There was no so-called fixed plot here. Even if there was some kind of fate here, it was still a fate that could be changed. Doctor, stay here. If someone comes with a scepter later, tell him the way to close it. After saying that, Roger joined the team that attacked Loki. Although Loki used all his strength and threw out his magic like crazy, he still inevitably fell into a situation where he would lose at any time. Especially when Roger also joined the battle, the situation became even worse. Although the battle was getting more and more miserable, it had to be said that Loki's performance at this time was perfect. In this extremely unfavorable situation, not only did he not lose quickly, but he also took advantage of the fact that Roger and the others had no experience in fighting together to launch several extremely threatening counterattacks. You are indeed very strong, but I, Loki, am not those ants that you can pinch. As soon as he finished speaking, Loki crazily burned the magic power in his body, and an astonishing momentum instantly gushed out from his body. Loki began to play with his life. Blind, slowness, paralysis, weakness. Energy storm, soul erosion, magic missile, flame, lightning, ice storm. One spell after another was instant cast. At this moment, Loki used his actions to prove what a magic cannon was. Faced with Loki's crazy attack, Roger and the other two had no choice but to retreat for the time being. Mages would never admit defeat if they fought with all their might. Reality proved that no one who could make a name for Asgard was weak. Although the god of trickery sounded a little wretched, when it came to real life, even the weakest god could show an unparalleled and tyrannical attitude. Loki's crazy output directly destroyed the top floor of the Stark building. 
Even the energy beam shot by the space stone trembled violently in the chaotic and violent magic storm. Chapter 132, Battle of New York When a mage attacked crazily without regard for the consequences, the scene would be extremely beautiful and the power would be unimaginable. Loki's determination not only successfully forced Roger and the other two people back, but also successfully attracted the attention of the Chitauri soldiers. Although Loki was only Chitauri's temporary commander, after discovering that their commander was facing the enemy's siege, these Chitauri soldiers rushed over for the first time. These Chitauri soldiers who were driving special aircraft, after rushing to Stark Building, without any hesitation, immediately launched an attack on Roger and the other two. A beam of energy shot toward them like a rainstorm. In the face of the attack of Chitauri warriors, Roger and the other two chose different ways to deal with it. Tony flew away from Stark Building for the first time and then used the mini-missile on his shoulder and the electric pulse cannon in his hands to counterattack. Compared to Tony, Thor's way of fighting back was much more brutal. Instead of retreating, Thor advanced and directly flew to the front of these Chitauri soldiers. The Mjolnir in his hand smashed the body of these soldiers. In addition to letting these Chitauri soldiers personally experience Mjolnir's physical attack, Thor also summoned lightning from time to time to clear a large area. Among the three people, Roger was the only one left in Stark Building. When these energy beams flew toward him, he waved the lightning around the sword of Kusanagi and blocked these energy beams one by one. Although this scene looked very unscientific, under the incredible dynamic vision of the Sharingan, Roger forcibly turned this slightly illusory scene into reality. It was said that someone could block all the bullets fired by the Gatling gun with just a sword dance. Although Roger had never personally seen this scene, he did not think it was impossible. As long as the speed was fast enough, let alone a sword dance to block bullets, even catching bullets with bare hands was not difficult. After blocking all the energy beams that were shooting at him, Roger decisively used body flickering technique and arrived in front of Loki like lightning. In an instant, the sword of Kusanagi in Roger's hand directly pierced through Loki's chest. It was an illusion again. After being pierced by Kusanagi's sword, this illusion quickly collapsed, turning into pure energy and dissipating into the air. Taking advantage of the fact that the Chitauri warriors were attacking Roger and the other two, Loki once again used the illusion escape technique that he was best at. Because of Loki's departure, the Chitauri warriors who attacked Roger and the other two became fewer. Not long after, these Chitauri warriors were all killed by Roger and the other two. Don't worry about Loki for now. We have a new playmate now. Tony pointed at the portal. An incomparably huge leviathan giant beast flew out from the portal. Let's clean up these Chitauri warriors first. Thor looked up at the leviathan giant beast and then flew directly toward the leviathan. The leviathan giant beast was not only Chitauri's large-scale war weapon, but it was also Chitauri's transport ship. When the Leviathan flew past all the buildings in New York, one by one, Chitauri warriors shot out from inside. After Thor left, Roger used summoning technique to call out the white three Megatama mask that he had not brought with him for a long time. What? Are you worried that these Chitauri warriors will see your appearance? Tony, who was hovering in the air, asked in confusion. No, I just don't want to be famous. After putting on the mask, Roger stepped on the fan and flew toward the Leviathan behemoth. The Battle of New York let the whole world know about the existence of Avengers. However, Roger did not want to let the ordinary people know what he looked like. Let Tony and the others do things like superheroes. When Roger flew to the vicinity of the Leviathan, this Leviathan was hit in the head by the Hulk's punch, and its whole body fell forward under the influence of inertia. One punch, one Leviathan. The Hulk announced his debut in a domineering way that belonged to himself. When the Leviathan giant beast was about to fall, Tony launch a small missile toward the Leviathan. Boom. If Stark comes out, it must be fine. Although the small missile that Tony shot out was still as big as an arm, the power of the explosion was beyond imagination. The body of the astonishingly large Leviathan beast was instantly splattered with flesh and blood, and its entire body was blasted into several pieces. When the flames of the explosion dispersed, Tony deliberately turned his head to look. It seemed to be saying, Did you see it? This was the power of technology. Give the order, Captain. Hawkeye said to Captain America after everyone gathered together. Okay, pay attention. If we can't close the portal, we have to control the situation. Barton, go to the roof and report the whereabouts of the large team and the scattered soldiers. Stark, you guard the blockade line. Anyone who runs out of three blocks, either come back or kill them. 
Captain America immediately arranged the tasks of Hawkeye and Tony. Can you send me on a journey? Hawkeye turned to Tony and said. No problem. Hold on tight, Fairy King. Tony did not waste any time and directly went to Hawkeye's side. He lifted him up and flew to the roof. Thor, you have to find a way to block the portal and slow down their advance. Can't you summon lightning and use lightning to strike these bastards? Natasha, you and I will stay on the ground and restrain the enemies on the ground. Natasha and Thor's tasks were immediately arranged. As for the Hulk and Roger, the two of you can move freely and attack with all your strength. After hearing Captain America's arrangements, the Hulk did not hesitate at all. With a leap, he directly arrived in front of the Chitauri soldiers hanging on the wall. Roger did not have any objections to Captain America's arrangements. However, he did not immediately attack like the Hulk. Instead, he stood on the fan and moved his arms. Then, he used Shadow Clone's technique. Bang! 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 Under the gaze of Steve Roger and Natasha, 50 masked Roger instantly appeared around them. Let me show you what a large-scale battle of ninjas is. As soon as he finished speaking, Roger and Shadow Clone instantly disappeared in front of Captain America and Natasha. Gunbei Uchiwa, on the other hand, was left where he was. A long time ago, he had left hundreds of Flying Thunder Gods formula in New York. Although some tactics were far away from the battlefield, the remaining ones were enough for him to perform a slaughter show that belonged to Flying Thunder God technique. In addition to these Flying Thunder Gods formula who had long been left behind, each of Shadow Clone also had Flying Thunder Gods formula on him. 50 Flying Thunder Gods formula activities, plus hundreds of Flying Thunder Gods formula fixed. New York was his home turf, Flying Thunder God technique. Chapter 133, A Man's Competitive Spirit Kill, begin. No one could clearly see how Roger attacked. When he and Shadow Clone disappeared, the soldiers of Chitori lost their lives one by one as if they were facing an invisible death god. Whether it was on the ground or in the sky, if the soldiers of Chitori appeared in the eyes of the people, they would all be greeted by their elusive and highly efficient attacks. Flash, attack, death, disappearance. Throat, heart, head, chest. Every time Roger and Shadow Clone appeared, they would take the lives of at least one Chitori soldier. Every time they appeared, they only appeared for less than a second. Chitori, who was difficult for ordinary people to contend against, was like an insignificant ant in front of them, casually crushed to death. Ninjas were originally a job who lived for killing. And Roger, even more so, displayed the characteristics of this ninja job to the extreme. The current Chitori warriors were more like victims who had no power to resist than intruders. Watching the Chitori soldiers fall from the sky one after another, or die on the spot, Steve Roger felt the horror of Roger for the first time. Fortunately, he is on our side. Steve Roger could not help but think of this. Where did you find him? After dealing with a few ignorant Kita soldiers, Rogers asked Natasha beside him. It wasn't us who found him. It was a few years ago when he suddenly appeared in New York and did something that ordinary people couldn't do. That was why we noticed his existence. Natasha did not stop her attack when she answered Steve Rogers' question. She kept pulling the trigger of the pistol. Haven't you investigated his background? It is impossible for someone with this ability to appear out of nowhere. Steve Roger himself became a superhero through the injection of super warrior medicine, so he knew very well that ordinary people could never have extraordinary strength for no reason. Yes, but we didn't get any useful information. The only thing we can be sure of now is that the ID he is using now is fake. Even S.H.I.E.L.D. could not find any useful information, and Rogers also gave up the idea of investigating Rogers' origin. Although Roger had many unknown secrets, as long as he did not become a dangerous person like the Red Skull, Steve Roger would not care too much about his past. Roger's high efficiency kills not only attracted Steve Roger's attention but also Loki's attention. At this time, Loki was standing on a flying device of Chitori, looking down at the entire New York. Although Loki did not feel sad about the death of these Chitori soldiers, Roger's high efficiency killing seriously hindered his plan to conquer. All troops, attack. Without any hesitation, Loki decisively gave the order for the entire army to attack. With Loki's command, more Chitori soldiers flew out of the portal, and even five or six of the Leviathan appeared. However, not long after these astonishing war behemoths appeared, dark clouds quickly appeared in the sky. Soon after, 
an incomparably huge bolt of lightning directly struck the leviathan giant beast at the very front. Relying on the armor on its body and its huge body, this leviathan giant beast withstood the attack of the giant lightning. However, this persistence only lasted for a short few seconds. The part of the leviathan that was struck by the lightning began to quickly turn red, and then its entire body exploded. Boom! The intense explosion not only took away the leviathan's life but also the lives of the Chitnori warriors around the portal. The remains of the leviathan and the bodies of the Chitnori warriors fell from the sky like meteorites, creating an unusual fireworks show. Although Thor's lightning attack this time was not as simple and crude as the Hulk's punch, the visual effect was more shocking than the Hulk's punch. When the lightning disappeared, Thor, who was standing at the top of the Empire building, could not help but gasp for breath. This lightning was not only the strongest lightning he had summoned so far but also the most exhausting. Although he quickly dealt with a leviathan, the attack of Chitori's army was not affected too much. One by one, the leviathan continued to fly out of the portal. When Thor killed a leviathan with shocking power, Roger also sent it to the top of a building and temporarily stopped his actions of harvesting Chitori's soldiers. Of course, he was the only one who stopped. His shadow clone was still efficiently carrying out the operation to harvest the lives of Chitarui's warriors. The Hulk dealt with a leviathan with one punch. Thor used a bolt of lightning to deal with a leviathan. Roger naturally could not fall behind. After observing the trajectory of the leviathan, a ray's nan wrapped in lightning appeared in his right hand. Thor was not the only one who could play with lightning. Lightning release railgun Rasen Shuriken. After aiming at two of the leviathan, Roger fired the railgun Rasen Shuriken in his hand. Rumble. A thunder-like sound rang out, and railgun Rasen Shuriken drew a light blue light that symbolized destruction and death in the air. Almost at the same time as the sound of thunder rang out, railgun Rasen Shuriken had already arrived in front of the first target. The leviathan covered in armor was instantly pierced through like a soft cake in front of railgun Rasen Shuriken. After piercing through the first leviathan, railgun Rasen Shuriken's momentum did not decrease and he quickly arrived in front of the second target. Boom! A dazzling fireball like the sun appeared in an instant, and the shock wave produced by the explosion instantly emptied the surrounding space. The air wave swept through New York like a level 12 hurricane. Railgun Rasen Shuriken, one shot, enter the soul. Killing a leviathan in one attack is nothing. I, Roger, can take two with one attack. This is the man's, damn competitive heart. After taking care of the two leviathans, Roger also saw the high and mighty Loki in the air. However, what attracted his attention at this time was not Loki, but the scepter in Loki's hand. Had the real thing finally appeared? After discovering Loki's trail, Roger immediately summoned Gunbei Uchiwa, who he had abandoned in the same place. As long as there was flying thunder god technique, it was enough to fly around the building. However, if it was a high-altitude battle, the regiment fan was still necessary. After receiving Roger's command, Gunbei Uchiwa, who was silently floating in the air, flew towards him like a missile. Loki, I'm definitely going to eat it. Chapter 134, Puny God Whether it was for 200 ninja coins or for the scepter in Loki's hand, Roger needed to settle things with Loki. Seeing Roger flying towards him, Loki did not hesitate and turned to leave. When it was time to risk his life, he would risk his life. When it was time to admit defeat, he would admit defeat. This was Loki's philosophy of survival. As he turned to leave, Loki did not forget to arrange for a large number of Chitori soldiers to stop Roger. Although these Chitori soldiers could not defeat Roger, it was not a problem to stop him. Lightning Release, Chitori Sharp Spear the five-meter-long Chidori sharp spear instantly floated up to Roger's right hand and then chopped the Chidori soldiers in front of him into two pieces like chopping vegetables. With just a few casual slashes, the soldiers in charge of stopping Roger turned into corpses that fell from the sky. After dealing with these soldiers, Roger once again flew toward Loki. Although Gunbei Uchiwa was not a specialized flying tool, the speed of the fan was no slower than Chidori's flying device. Not long after, Roger caught up to Loki. As if realizing that he could not shake off Roger, Loki also began to counterattack. Magic was released one by one, and all kinds of fireballs, ice and lightning were constantly smashing toward Roger. At the same time, more and more Chitori soldiers joined in the attack on Roger. With the advantage of distance, Loki cast all kinds of magic without any worries, and the scepter in his hand also constantly fired beams of energy. It had to be said that Loki's kiting tactics were the most suitable battle style for mages. 
If Roger was only good at close combat, then he really couldn't do anything to Loki right now. But fortunately, he was not the type of ninja who only knew close combat. After clearing out the charging Chitori soldiers again, Roger put away his Kusanagi sword and took out three Flying Thunder God Kunao. In addition to the fan under his feet, there was also Flying Thunder God Kunao who had been enchanted by Odin. Without any hesitation, Roger directly threw out the three Flying Thunder God Kunao in his hand. Clang! 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 The three Flying Thunder God Kunao flew toward Loki like bullets, and then they were blocked by the scepter in Loki's hand. Just this? After easily neutralizing Roger's attack, a look of disdain appeared on Loki's face. However, at this moment, Roger, who had been stepping on the fan, suddenly disappeared. Not good. Although Loki did not know what Roger was going to do, the moment Roger disappeared, he immediately became extremely alert. Just as he was looking around for traces of Roger, he saw the three Flying Thunder God Kunao again. Not only did Flying Thunder God Kunao not fall as he had expected, but he also attacked him again. Mjolnir could automatically attack the enemy under Thor's control, and so could Roger and Flying Thunder God Kunao. Three blades of Flying Thunder God Kunao, three different angles of attack. Although Flying Thunder God Kunao's attack was very fast, Loki's reaction was also not slow. Just as Flying Thunder God Kunao was about to hit Loki's body, a barrier invisible to the naked eye appeared on his body. It was like a small defensive barrier that completely protected him. Magic Barrier Flying Thunder God Kunao returned empty-handed again. Flying Thunder God Kunao, who had hit the magic barrier, was sent flying like a steel plate. Flying Thunder God Technique Second Step The moment Flying Thunder God Kunao was sent flying, Roger, who had disappeared, suddenly appeared behind Loki, holding one of Flying Thunder God Kunao with his left hand. Big Ball Rays Nan Loki noticed the appearance of Roger and instantly added several defensive spells to his body. But all of this was meaningless. Big Ball Rays Nan instantly hit his back, and an irresistible force instantly enveloped his entire body, sending him flying. He saw Loki continuously smash several buildings with an irregular rotating posture. It was only then that he finally dispelled the terrifying impact force of Big Ball Rays Nan. Although Loki was sent flying, Roger was faced with another enemy. A Leviathan charged toward him like an angry bull, opening a huge mouth that was the size of a car at the same time. Although Leviathan's attack speed was not slow, wanting to bite Roger was still a bit too far-fetched. As long as Roger was willing, he could even leave this place the moment Leviathan bit him. However, at this time, not only did he not have any intention of leaving, he stepped on the fan and directly jumped in front of Leviathan. Wood Release, Cutting Technique a long wooden thorn more than one meter long gushed out from his right hand, and then ruthlessly stabbed into Leviathan's huge right eye. A woo. Leviathan let out a howl of pain like a wild beast. The moment the howl sounded out, countless thick wooden thorns shot out from Leviathan's body. Leviathan's howl stopped abruptly, and at the same time, it ended with its life. After Leviathan died, he fell from the sky like a meteorite and heavily hit the ground, raising a huge cloud of dust. This was the third Leviathan who died in his hands. After taking care of this Leviathan, Roger flew to the place where Loki fell. Then, he saw a familiar scene. Enough, you bastards. I am a god, you idiot. Loki roared angrily at the Hulk, successfully stopping him from moving forward. You ant, don't even think about it. Loki wanted to continue, but before he could finish, the Hulk grabbed his right leg. In the next few seconds, Roger witnessed an inhuman scene. Asgard's god of trickery, the commander of Chitori's army, and the frost giant Loki were flung around on the ground like trash by the Hulk. Bang! 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 Every time the Hulk threw a punch, it would leave a clear hole in the ground, and at the same time, it would bury a shadow in Loki's heart that could never be healed. The dull crash made Roger, who was a spectator, feel a little reluctant. At the same time, he could not help but think of a problem. If Loki was killed by the Hulk just like that, would the system admit that the commission was completed? Just as Roger was considering whether to stop the Hulk, he accidentally smashed Loki to death, the Hulk finally stopped this action that would cause great damage to Loki's body and mind at the same time. What a weak god! After leaving Loki behind, the Hulk did not forget to add another sentence. Well, well done. When the Hulk arrived in front of him, 
Roger gave his evaluation. Although Loki was lying motionless in the pit, he was still alive, or in other words, his body was still alive. As for whether his spirit was still alive or not, it was not within the scope of Roger's consideration. Chapter 135, Closing the Portal After venting his anger on Loki, the Hulk left in satisfaction and continued to fight against the soldiers. Roger went straight to Loki and looked him up and down. There were no fractures, no missing arms or legs. Except for the fact that his mental state was not good, Loki now looked very healthy. After confirming Loki's current state, Roger sighed helplessly. An alien race like Loki really wasn't an ordinary type of resistance. First, he endured Big Ball Ray's and Gan's attack, then he endured the Hulk's inhuman attack. But even so, Loki was still alive and well. He wasn't even seriously injured. If the injury on the spirit layer was not considered. After silently sighing in his heart, Roger picked up the scepter that had fallen to the side. From the looks of it, this scepter was exactly the same as the one he was currently holding on to. However, the moment he picked up this scepter, Roger felt the difference between the two. Extremely hidden energy entered his body through his right hand, and then quietly flowed into his brain. If he had not been prepared and was extremely sensitive to energy reactions, he might not have been able to discover the existence of this energy. Since he had discovered the existence of this energy, then it was naturally very easy to deal with it. With a thought, the chakra in his body stopped this foreign energy, and then forced this energy source out of his body. Soon after, his right hand which was holding the scepter also shone with a burst of blue and white chakra radiance. After he prepared a protection for his right hand, he carefully sensed the dark blue gem at the top of the scepter. Sure enough, inside this dark blue stone, there is a small yellow stone hidden. Mind stone finally appeared. After sensing the existence of mind stone, Roger decisively ended his perception. If he didn't seek death, he wouldn't die. Using his essence to touch mind stone, he could just think about it in his mind. Loki had already laid down, and he had already gotten his hands on the scepter. It was time to put an end to this war. With the scepter in his right hand and Loki in his left hand, Roger stepped on Gunbei Uchiwa and returned to Stark Building. Because of Loki's crazy output before, the top floor of the Stark Building has completely disappeared. The platform where Space Stone is placed is the current roof of the Stark Building. Doctor, how to close this thing? Roger didn't give the scepter to Professor Jervie. This kind of ritual had to be done by his own hands. Use the tip of the scepter directly to block the energy port under Tesseract. It had to be said that the back door left by the professor was simple and crude. Just as Roger was about to use his scepter to pierce through the energy barrier around Space Stone, he suddenly thought of something. He took out a small communication device from his pocket and hung it beside his ear. Roger said, everyone if you don't have any objections, I plan to close the portal up there. If someone hasn't had enough fun, I can close it later. Turn it off immediately. Steve Rogers' voice sounded first. Don't, wait. Tony's voice followed closely. Stark, the enemy is still pouring in. Captain America's first reaction was that Tony was the person that Roger was talking about who had not had enough fun. There is a nuclear bomb flying here. It will explode in one minute. Tony immediately explained. After hearing Tony's words, the communication device quickly quieted down. A nuclear bomb. The people of the council finally made the decision that Roger was familiar with. Nothing had changed. I've already thought of where to send it. After a few seconds of silence, Tony's voice came from the communicator again. Not long after, Roger and the others saw Tony fly straight toward Stark Building with a nuclear bomb, and then directly rushed into the portal in the air. Tony and the nuclear bomb disappeared in the portal. A few seconds later, the flying leviathan began to fall, and the originally lively Chitori soldiers also fell down at the same time. Through the portal, one could see a huge fireball as hot as the sun. However, Tony's figure did not appear again. Close the portal. Steve Rogers' voice came again. Wait a bit longer. Roger directly gave his answer. Roger's refusal stunned Steve Roger for a moment. Then he remembered that Roger was not a member of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Avenger. Although Roger participated in this battle, strictly speaking, he was just an external help hired by Nick Fury. They did not wait for long before Tony's figure appeared in the portal again. However, Tony did not fly out of the portal but fell down freely. When Tony reappeared, Roger used the scepter to close the portal. Without the continuous output of energy from Space Stone, 
the portal in the sky quickly disappeared and the sky returned to its original appearance. He didn't slow down at all. Thor quickly noticed that something was wrong. He immediately waved them Jalnir in his hand, intending to catch Tony who was falling. However, the Hulk was faster than him. The Hulk pounced towards Tony like a giant ape, his thick right arm directly grabbing Tony, and the two of them crashed into the wall of the building next to them. After using the outer wall of the building to dissolve most of the impact force, the Hulk once again jumped and returned to the ground with Tony. To be more precise, he should have fallen to the ground. With the strong Hulk as a buffer, Tony did not withstand too much impact. However, the Hulk soon discovered that something was wrong and pushed Tony, who was in his arms. Captain America and Thor immediately rushed to the Hulk and Tony's side. When Thor violently pulled off Tony's helmet, Captain America's voice rang out. Is he still alive? At this time, Tony was motionless like a corpse with his eyes closed. Captain America pressed his ear against Tony's chest, but he did not hear anything. Roger did not go down immediately. When Tony was still falling, he used sensing technique to sense Tony's condition. Tony was not dead yet. The life energy in his body still existed, but Captain America and the others did not know this. However, they soon found out. After the Hulk shouted sadly, Tony woke up. What is going on? What is going on? No one performed CPR on me, right? Tony gasped for breath and asked with a shocked face. Chapter 136, Kanaha The Atmosphere Terminator The originally tragic atmosphere immediately disappeared after Tony spoke. We won. Steve Roger looked away from Tony and said tiredly. Good job, guys. Let's not go to work tomorrow and give ourselves a day off. Have you ever eaten roasted meat? There is a barbecue restaurant on the two streets away. Actually, I have not eaten it, but I want to try it. If Tony was not still lying on the ground, and the armor on his body was full of obvious scars. Based on his current appearance, no one would think that he was the superhero who entered the portal with a nuclear bomb. It's not over yet. Thor did not refuse Tony's proposal, but he looked up at the Stark building that was no longer on the top floor. Then we will go later. A few minutes later, Thor and the others arrived at the platform where Space Stone was placed. They saw Loki with blurry eyes and Roger, who had been waiting here for a long time. The Scepter and Loki are here. You can deal with them however you want. After saying that, Roger threw the Scepter in his hand to Steve Roger. Although Mind Stone was inside the Scepter, Roger did not intend to take it for himself. Or rather, he did not have such a plan at the moment. After casually taking the Scepter that Roger threw over, Captain America looked at him doubtfully, then asked, Is there anything different about this scepter from the one before? This one is more powerful now. Roger answered casually. As for the fact that there was Mind Stone in the scepter, he did not intend to tell Rogers now. If possible, he hoped that he could develop in the direction he was familiar with as much as possible in the future. Whether Ultron and Vision will be born is not the focus of his consideration. All he really cared about was Wanda, the Scarlet Witch. I definitely don't have a greedy body. I only care about Wanda's superpower. Yes, only her superpower. Definitely. According to his plan, Wanda's superpower was the key to opening the kaleidoscope. Although he could also directly exchange for a kaleidoscope in the system, considering that this evolution required an entire 300 ninja coins, he decisively gave up on this plan. That was a whole 300 ninja coins. As for the most orthodox method of leveling up, it would undergo a huge amount of negative emotions, such as witnessing the death of the person he loved deeply, which was not within his consideration from the beginning. After completing the final handover, the few of them finally went to the Turkish barbecue restaurant that Tony mentioned, and had a somewhat depressing lunch. Time passed in a flash. Unknowingly, a week had passed since the Battle of New York. In the past week, S.H.I.E.L.D had revealed his existence in a high-profile manner and was in charge of dealing with the various troubles left behind by the Battle of New York. The corpses of the soldiers of Chitori, the various alien weapons, and technology, the additional damage brought by war, the guidance and control of public opinion. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. began all kinds of post-war measures at the first moment, the existence of the Avenger still spread throughout the world. Iron Man Tony Stark, Captain America Steve Roger, the Hulk Bruce Banner, Thor, Black Widow Natasha, Hawkeye Barton, and the Mysterious Masked Man. Although Roger was not a member of the Avenger from the beginning to the end, people regarded him as a member of the Avenger. 
it couldn't be helped because he acted like he had been injected with stimulants in battle. Fortunately, Roger had considered this problem from the beginning and had always brought his three Megatama mask along. Therefore, his true identity was probably, perhaps, not many people knew about it yet. Shield Took Loki's scepter, Thor took away Tesseract and Loki. Tony and Banner, two highly intelligent people, were together. They were conducting research that ordinary people could not understand or understand. Rogers, Natasha, and Barton began their respective vacation. They were currently in a state of losing contact. After handing Loki over to the company, the Systems Commission finally changed to a complete state, sending 200 ninja coins to Roger. In addition to the original 40, his amount of ninja coins reached 240, which was a small amount of savings. In general, everything was similar to what he had expected except for one thing, one thing that he had never expected. His office had been destroyed. Before leaving office, he also specially told Erika and the others to prepare for battle and protect office. However, he never thought that the invasion of Chithori's army would still destroy his office. To be precise, the person who destroyed him, office, was not Chithori's warrior, but Abomination and Blonsky. He did not know if this guy had hit his head or if he had lost control of his destructive power. When killing those Chitori warriors, Abomination successfully destroyed office. It was so destroyed that there was no need to repair it because the entire office building had collapsed. After saving all the things that were still worth saving from office, Roger bid farewell to office, who had accompanied him for several years and then chose a new office location. This time, he did not choose those remote streets, but directly moved the office to the famous Imperial building. Not only that, but he also cancelled Detective Roger who had been used for several years and registered a new company. Kanaha's Private Military and Security Consultant Company In America, a private military company was a completely legal existence. The premise was that they paid taxes on time. Erica and others had no doubts about Roger changing the detective office into a private military company. From the beginning, they didn't think that Roger's office was the detective's office. Have you ever seen a detective's office, whose main business is mainly about fighting and killing? Only unusual people like Roger would treat this business as the main business of the detective's office. So changing it to a private military company was more in line with their current situation. However, there was one thing they did not understand, which was why Roger changed the company's name to Kanaha. In this regard, Roger's explanation was only a short sentence. Where Kanaha flew, the fire was endless. After changing office into a private military company, the commission Roger and the others received finally became normal. The rich lady spent a lot of money to ask for children, helping the rich second generation pick up girls, looking for missing cats, dogs, and other commissions, completely disappearing from their sight. The dull days passed day by day. After moving to the Empire building for more than a month, Roger finally received a commission approved by the system. Mission Content, Capture the Out-of-Control Lizard Experimental Body in the Sewers of New York. Mission Status, Incomplete. Mission Reward, 30 Ninja Coins. Chapter 137, Dr. Lizard The out-of-control lizard test subject in the sewers? Roger originally did not intend to personally accept this commission, but after seeing that the client was the security director of the Oscorp, he changed his mind. The Oscorp was a large group that was as famous as Stark Industry, and both of them were important suppliers for the American military. However, it was different from Stark Industry, which specialized in energy and military technology. The main research direction of Oscorp was in the field of biotechnology. Green Goblin Norman Osborn, Green Goblin 2 Harry Osborn, Spider-Man Peter Parker, The Lizard Kurt Connors, Dr. Octavius, Electro, Rhino. After accepting this commission from Oscorp, Roger's mind flashed with names that were more or less related to Oscorp. Sky, you came in. Roger pressed the office phone on the table and called Sky, who was in the office next to him. Although the company was moved to the Empire Building, the newly established private military company in Kanaha still maintained its original simplicity. Simply put, there were only five people in the entire company. The only change was that everyone had their own office. Even Frank the Punisher and Abomination, Blonsky, had their own office. However, because of their appearance, they had never really come to the new company. What's wrong? After entering Roger's office, Sky sat in front of Roger and said casually. Help me check someone. His name is Peter Parker. He should still be a primary school student now. 
it is possible that he is already in middle school. I want all his information. Peter Parker? A primary school student? Yes. Although he did not know what Roger was going to do, Sky still happily accepted the mission. After the Battle of New York, Roger made a small deal with Sky. Sky would become a part of the company and be responsible for information and intelligence gathering. In return, Roger would help her find information about her parents. Sky wanted to investigate himself, but after Shield appeared in a high profile manner, she found that she could not find the information she wanted from Shield alone. Thus, she had the idea of Roger, who was mistaken as a member of the Avenger. And then there was that small deal. After Sky left, Roger once again picked up the information provided by the Oscorp and began to read it. Because of the experiment accident, a certain experimental lizard had a mutated human body. Strong, agile, berserk, with a certain degree of intelligence and green appearance. The data provided by Oscorp was very limited. However, this was also very normal. After all, the specific information data belonged to the business secrets of Oscorp. There was no need for them to announce it to the public. According to Oscorp, this was a mutated lizard. But if he did not guess wrong, this was not a mutated lizard, this was the lizard professor himself. According to the security chief, in order to catch this mutated lizard, they lost a lot of manpower, so they had to entrust a private military company outside. Unfortunately, the previous private military companies that accepted the commission all failed. Finally, under the recommendation of a reliable person, they found this Roger, the private military company of Kanaha that had just been established for a month. In the private military company, Kanaha was a completely new company. However, the price that Kanaha wanted was no less than those old companies. The commission was at least $10 million, and it had to be paid in advance. If not for the fact that there was no other way, the Oscorp wouldn't have found Kanaha and paid $30 million for it. Flying in the sky during the war in New York, and now they were going to drill into the sewers, which was a bit heartbreaking. However, for the sake of $30 million, let's go down to the sewers. After casually putting down the information in his hands, Roger used Shadow Clone's technique. Bang, bang, bang. A Shadow Clone instantly appeared in front of him. Going into the sewers was a matter of time. Therefore, he decisively handed over the early investigation work to Shadow Clone. These eight Shadow Clones would go to the location where the lizard had appeared several times before to see if they could find the current whereabouts of the lizard. As long as they could determine a general range, he could use sensing technique to lock onto the accurate location of the lizard. Although he could now use sensing techniques technique to search for the traces of the lizard, it would be very tiring. New York currently had a population of about 20 million. The life energy of the lizard was stronger than ordinary people, but it was definitely not to the point where it could be discovered at a glance. Rather than searching with great effort, it would be better to let Shadow Clone go over and confirm a rough range. Anyway, Shadow Clone would not have any objections to drilling into the sewers. When Shadow Clone planned to use Flying Thunder God technique to leave office, he suddenly thought of something. You all transform into Nick Fury. He was the president of a private military company, so he still needed a face. As for Nick Fury, he should not mind being seen in the sewer. With Motherfucker's title, it was impossible for him to mind such trivial matters. After Shadow Clone left, Roger also used Flying Thunder God technique to return home and then played the creed of the berserker that he had yet to clear. A few hours later, just as he controlled a certain king-type assassin who was unwilling to reveal his name to complete a perfect infiltration, he received feedback from one of the Shadow Clones who took the initiative to remove it. At the same time, the feedback was also from the information that Shadow Clone had investigated. It's time to work. After removing the other seven Shadow Clones, Roger summoned Kusanagi Sword and three Megatama Mask and then used Flying Thunder God technique to arrive at the last place of the original Shadow Clone. After being sent to the sewer, the first thing he did was to erase Flying Thunder God's formula, which was left behind by Shadow Clone. There was enough Flying Thunder God's formula in New York, and there was no need to leave one more place in this place that only teleported once. After cleaning up Flying Thunder God's formula, he used sensing technique to sense his surroundings. It really is here. He put on three Megatama mask and quickly moved on the wall of the sewer, not in accordance with the law of gravity. There were not only Spider-Man who could walk on the wall. As he kept moving forward, he encountered more and more lizards. Big, small, and all kinds of lizards. These lizards seemed to be summoned from the depths of their souls, 
crawling forward one by one. Chapter 138, Physical Effect What was the charm? This was it. The lizard might not have thought that he would have such great charm after transforming. The only pity was that his damn charm was only effective on lizards. If his attraction could work on humans, he could become a superstar in this era. But now, he could only become a superstar in the eyes of lizards. You are electricity, you are light, you are the only myth. In the hearts of these lizards, the lizard was the god in their eyes, their everything, their entire world. After following these brainless lizards for a while, Roger finally saw his target. A lizard man that was two to three meters tall. When he saw the lizard, the lizard also saw him. However, the lizard did not attack him immediately. Instead, he curiously sized up the masked uninvited guest. The lizard was no stranger to the three Megatama mask on Roger's face. To be more precise, no one was unfamiliar with him. This is the mask of the Avenger member Masked Man. After the Battle of New York, the Avengers became famous. And the consequence of becoming famous was that they had a lot of fans, as well as many derivative products. Iron Man's figurine, the Hulk's figurine, the Eagle's bow and arrow model, Thor's hammer toy, the mask of the Masked Man. Only you couldn't imagine, there was nothing they couldn't do. Even Roger himself had bought several of his own figurines and placed them at home. It had to be said that the handicrafts were quite forceful. Especially the one he stood on the fan and wielded Kusanagi's sword, it was especially exquisite. And according to his understanding, the first few toy companies that were sold the best had been bought by Tony some time ago. This also caused the products of the Hulk, Thor, and Roger to be in a strange state. The Iron Man figurine had the most designs and was never broken. When he saw Roger, the lizard thought that Roger was a loyal fan of the Masked Man. However, he soon found that something was wrong. Roger stood on the wall. After discovering this, the eyes of the lizard involuntarily shrank a bit. This guy was really the masked man. In an instant, several thoughts flashed through his mind. I am not an alien. After a few seconds of silence, the lizard finally said his first sentence. If it was possible, the lizard would definitely not treat this sentence as an opening statement. However, his current appearance made him have no choice but to do so. Although he did not look like Chitori at all, his current appearance was completely different from that of a human. The Avenger was famous for resisting the invasion of aliens. After confirming that Roger was the masked man, his first reaction was that he was mistaken for an alien, which was why he attracted Roger. I know you are not an alien. Roger had never expected that the first sentence of the lizard would be this. Can I leave now? Suppressing the beast-like killing instinct in his heart, the lizard said in a harmless tone. If not for a little difficult to smile now, he would definitely have smiled when he said this. The serum affected the lizard's mind to a certain extent, but it did not make him lose all his reason. Although he now feels that he is a perfect creature beyond human beings, he is not yet arrogant enough to compete with the Avengers masked man. On the internet, there were several videos of Roger killing Leviathan. As for the lizard, he had just watched these videos. Leave? Of course not. You are my mission target. Moreover, I still have some things I need your help with. Roger's tone was as calm as ever, but to the lizard, this was no different from a bolt from the blue. After hearing Roger's answer, the lizard fell silent. Then, he exploded. F asterisk CK the mission target. F asterisk CK the fake masked man. I am the perfect creature in the history of evolution, the future of mankind, and the master of the world. It was unknown whether it was because he was stimulated by Roger's words or because he could not suppress the wild instinct in his heart, but the lizard changed his previous caution and pounced directly at Roger. His courage was commendable. Unfortunately, it was useless. When the lizard left claw, which was about the size of his chest, reached a meter in front of him, he pulled out Sword of Kusanagi from his waist. Lightning released Jidori Katana. Wrapped in electricity, Sword of Kusanagi drew a beautiful arc. A smooth, glass-like cut appeared on the left arm of the lizard. The huge left claw fell directly into the dirty water of the sewer, and bright red blood burst out of the broken mouth. When the blood was about to touch him, Roger used body flickering technique to leave the place. The lizard slammed into the wall that Roger was standing on before and then hung on it like a real gecko. The pain coming from his left arm not only did not calm the lizard down, but it also made him even more crazy, and he howled crazily. Then, under Roger's gaze, the lizard's left claw grew out again. 
it only took two or three seconds for his left arm to return to its original appearance. This kind of recovery was very good. Although there was something wrong with the serum of the lizard, which made it impossible for him to maintain his human form. However, he had to admit that his design philosophy was correct. He indeed had the ability to regenerate limbs, and it was also a very amazing ability to regenerate limbs. After his left arm recovered, the lizard did not hesitate and pounced toward Roger again. With just one claw, he could tear this damn masked man into two halves. He only needed to succeed once. From a certain perspective, this tactic of the lizard was correct. However, he had overlooked a very serious problem. That was the possibility that he could not catch Roger. If it was a normal human state, the lizard might have considered this point. However, it was clear that he did not have this kind of rational thought right now. Facing the lizard who was pouncing towards him again, Roger did not hold back and slashed out again with the sword of Kusanagi in his hand. Relying on his speed that far exceeded the lizard, Roger easily dodged the lizard pounce and then gave him two sword strikes. Since you can't calm down with one hand broken, then break two. If you can't calm down after having two hands cut off, then even your legs will be cut off. Physical sensation, he was a master. After failing again, the lizard could not hang on the wall like before and fell to the floor of the sewer with his broken hands. Without both hands, even if he wanted to hang it on the wall, there was nothing he could do. He was a lizard, not a gecko. Chapter 139, Equation Reduction Even if he was really a gecko, it was impossible for him to stick to the wall after losing his two hands. A few seconds after falling to the floor of the sewer, the lizard's two hands grew out again and continued to show off to Roger. Just when Roger thought that this guy was still unwilling to give up, the lizard made an unexpected move. He decisively turned around and ran. The instinct of the beast drove the lizard to attack Roger, and now, it was the instinct of the beast that drove him away from here. The strong desire to survive made the lizard burst out at an astonishing speed and quickly disappeared at the corner of the sewer. The sewers in New York were much more complicated than the streets. In this maze-like sewer network, there were all kinds of unknown corners or corners. As long as he could successfully pull apart the distance, even if it was only a short period of time, he would be able to get rid of Roger. The idea was very plump, but the reality was very bone-chilling. The speed of the lizard escape was indeed very fast, but Roger was faster than him. Looking at Roger who was getting closer and closer to him, the lizard's potential was further stimulated, and he began to accelerate. Run, run crazily. It was not fast enough, it was even faster. The lizard revealed a speed that completely did not match his current size, running like a mad bull. However, he never would have thought that the current Roger was deliberately suppressing his speed. He did not want to catch up with the lizard. If he remembered correctly, the lizard state was not stable. As long as the effectiveness of the serum was completely consumed, the lizard would become a human again. The lizard, whose mind was affected by the serum, was not a qualified subject to talk to. He was waiting for the lizard to change back to Kurt Connor. Under his intentional expulsion, the serum effectiveness of the lizard was quickly consumed. As if finding that he had no hope of getting rid of Roger, the lizard stopped his meaningless run and turned to face Roger. What do you want? The lizard did not attack Roger and roared in a helpless tone. I said before that you are my mission target. I need you to complete the mission. But before I complete the commission, I need you to do me a small favor. Roger's tone was as calm as ever. Come with me. After saying that, the lizard ignored Roger and headed straight for his secret laboratory. After following the lizard in the sewer for a period of time, Roger saw the simple laboratory. Not long after returning to the laboratory, the doctor changed back to his original appearance. Wear this, I'm not used to talking to men who don't wear clothes. Roger threw a white coat on the table to Connor. After getting dressed, Dr. Connor sat straight on the only chair and said, Tell me, what exactly do you want to do? Two things. First, I will hand you over to Oscorp. Second. Before Roger could finish, Dr. Connors interrupted him. Aren't you S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Avenger? Is this deal between S.H.I.E.L.D. and Oscorp? I am not a S.H.I.E.L.D. And I am not an Avenger. I have nothing to do with Oscorp. As for whether S.H.I.E.L.D. has any deal with Oscorp, I don't know, and I don't want to know. You, just listen carefully, don't interrupt me. After confirming that Dr. Connors had fully understood what he meant, Roger continued, Oscorp gave me a commission, so I want to give you to them. Whether you are willing or not, this is your end. 
As for whether you can escape from Oscorp, that is your business. The second thing, do you remember Richard Parker? You are all experts in the field of cross-species inheritance. The difference is that one of you studied spiders, and the other studied lizards. Of course, I remember him. He is a genius scientist. Unfortunately, an accident took his life. Dr. Connors, of course, remembered Richard. When conducting cross-species genetic research, they had a lot of dealings with him. If I give you a sample of the blood that can perfectly fuse with Richard Parker mutated spider, can you restore Richard Parker's equation and make appropriate changes? If there was only one Spider-Man in this world, it would be a little too boring. And who said that Spider-Man can only be a man, Spider-Gwen and Spider-Silk are both women? Restore equation? Richard's research roots have not been completed. The mutated spider roots he developed cannot conduct any species experiments. Dr. Connors is very clear on the extent of Richard's experiments. Oscorp now has a large group of Richard's mutated spiders. But those mutated spiders, apart from their own mutation, the roots have no experimental value. No, he succeeded. It's just that you have not found the correct key. Roger gave a piece of shocking news that Dr. Connors had never expected. Richard succeeded? How was this possible? Impossible, this is absolutely impossible. Oscorp has tried all kinds of species, and those mutated spider roots can't merge with any species. Dr. Connors said excitedly, he didn't believe the information Roger gave him. Believe it or not, I just want to know if you can restore the equation if there is such a blood sample. Looking at the serious face of Roger, Dr. Connors thought for a moment. If you really have such a blood sample, I should be able to restore the equation. However, why should I help you? Do you think I will help you restore the equation if you hand me over to the person who gave me to Oscorp? Although Roger had not said it clearly, when he recalled the words he had said before, Dr. Connors had roughly guessed something. You will definitely help me. There are two reasons. Your equation is not stable. Richard's equation can help you perfect your own equation, allowing your right hand to truly recover. Second, you actually don't have the right to choose. When I hand you over to Oscorp, if you are lucky, they will continue to let you study, but you will lose your freedom from then on and become a tool for Oscorp. If you are unlucky, you should be very clear about your end. After all, you are an expert on this side. However, if you are willing to help me, then you are my friend. For friends, I usually help them solve some problems that they cannot solve. For example, let them not be bullied, or have freedom. After he finished speaking, Roger did not say anything else and silently waited for Dr. Connors's answer. Chapter 140, Easy Commission Dr. Connors did not answer immediately. Instead, he lowered his head silently, as if he was really thinking about Roger's suggestion. Roger did not urge Dr. Connors, because he could already guess Dr. Connors' answer. Dr. Connors was a smart person, and he was a smart person with a strong desire. To him, making his lost right arm grow back was definitely the most important thing in his life, and there was no one else. Losing temporary freedom and obtaining the hope to truly restore his right arm was not a difficult choice. Just as Roger expected, after a few minutes of silence, Dr. Connors gave the answer he wanted to hear. I can help you restore Richard's equation, but all of this will have to wait until you save me from Oscorp. Moreover, I want to know how you will save me? Although Oscorp could not compare to S.H.I.E.L.D. He was not the kind of existence that could be easily manipulated. Dr. Connors looked up at Roger and asked the question he was most concerned about at the moment. It's very simple. I will leave a mark on you that only I know. After handing you over to Oscorp, I will confirm your location through this mark and take you away. It was not the first time that Roger had given the target to the client and taken the target away from the client after completing the task. The last time he had enjoyed such treatment was S.H.I.E.L.D., who was far stronger than Oscorp. As for whether Oscorp would have any objections to this, Roger did not take it to heart because it was impossible for Oscorp to know that he had done it. Mark? Are you sure this method can work? Dr. Connors did not doubt Roger's ability. Someone who could casually kill Leviathan would not deceive him on this issue. Moreover, this kind of deception was meaningless and would only affect the cooperation between the two. However, as a scientist, he had a kind of rational doubt about the mark that only he could see. Don't worry, in this aspect, I never fail. In the next ten minutes or so, Roger continued to communicate with Dr. Connors about some details. Then, Roger gave Dr. Connors a hand knife and completely knocked him out. 
After leaving the sewer with the unconscious Dr. Connors, Roger called the Oscorp security chief who was entrusted with the task. When he received the phone call from Roger, the security chief named Alan was stunned for a moment, then rushed over with a security team. From the commission to now, only four or five hours had passed. The super high efficiency displayed by Roger made Alan suspect the professionalism of the previous few private military companies. They are all private military companies, how can there be such a big gap? Can you have some professionalism? Could this industry be any better? Half an hour later, Alan brought Oscorp's security team to the place Roger mentioned and saw the unconscious Dr. Connors. He is here. Do you need to confirm his identity? Roger's voice sounded. No need, he is the person we are looking for. With just a simple look, Alan confirmed the identity of Dr. Connors. As the security director of Oscorp, Alan was not unfamiliar with Dr. Connors. Moreover, when Dr. Connors just escaped from Oscorp, he was the first to lead people to pursue him. However, his pursuit failed, and the talents had the private military company that was entrusted to the outside. Under Alan's signal, five or six security guards quickly rushed up and added a bunch of shackles that Roger had never seen before to the unconscious Dr. Connors. After tying Dr. Connors up like a felon, these security guards carried Dr. Connors to a special metal cage. Thank you for your help. We may have more opportunities to cooperate in the future. After saying that, Alan extended his right hand to Roger, expressing his gratitude. Happy cooperation. When Dr. Connors was locked up in a special metal cage, the system's entrustment also updated the status as soon as possible. Mission content, capture the out-of-control lizard experimental body in the sewer of New York. Mission status, complete. Mission reward, 30 ninja coins has sent. Number of available ninja coins, 270. Ninja coins easily got 30, and it was another wonderful day. When Oscorp's security team disappeared from sight, Roger took out his phone again and called the Punisher. Dr. Connors had already handed it over to Oscorp according to the plan, so the things that Dr. Connors left behind naturally needed to be handled. This was also the problem that Roger had previously communicated with Dr. Connors about. The Punisher would take away the entire simple laboratory that Dr. Connors had left in the sewer. Roger also needed to get the blood samples of Richard's mutated spider and Peter Parker before rescuing Dr. Connors. According to Dr. Connors, next to the cross-species laboratory in the Oscorp building, there is a laboratory dedicated to cultivating Richard's mutant spiders. In that laboratory, there were thousands of mutated spiders. As long as one could enter the laboratory, one could easily obtain Richard's mutated spider. To invade a large company's secret laboratory, might be a little difficult for ordinary people. But for Roger, this was as simple as returning to his own home to take things. He didn't even need to personally make a move. He just needed to arrange for a shadow clone to go over. After instructing the Punisher, Roger first used Flying Thunder God technique to return home and take a bath. After completely erasing the smell of the sewer on his body, he then used Flying Thunder God technique to return to his office. How is the investigation of Peter Parker's information going? After returning to the office, Roger directly picked up the internal phone on the table and inquired about the progress of Sky's investigation. The investigation is done. It has been sent to your email. After answering Roger, Sky directly hung up the phone. Although the call time was short, Roger heard clear typing from the other side of the line. She wouldn't be invading another government department, right? Normally speaking, there wouldn't be any big problems with Sky's daily hobby. But the key to the problem was that she was always thinking about some important secret departments, such as Shield. Sky's hacking skills were of course top notch, but that did not mean that she could quietly invade Shield. If she had such an ability, she would not need to cooperate with Roger. Not long after he moved to the new company, Roger received a warm reminder from Motherfucker, which made him slightly control his curiosity. Chapter 141 Preparation Before Restoration After temporarily putting Sky's question to the back of his mind, Roger opened his mailbox and began to browse through the information Sky had gathered. Peter Parker, Father Richard Parker, 11 years old, lived in Queens, lived with his uncle and aunt after the death of his parents, and is currently studying at Ellie Pool Park Elementary School in Queens. Uncle Ben Parker, an ordinary technician, and Aunt May Parker, a nurse at the public hospital. In addition to this basic information, Sky also invaded the primary school Peter was studying. He found all of Peter's results from the student database. All the subjects were A's. Although he was still young, 
from the results of the exam and the various evaluations given by the teachers, little Peter had already begun to have the performance of a genius. However, at the end of the information, Sky specifically made a note. He was introverted, not good at socializing, and had fewer friends. After reading Peter's information, Roger leaned back in his chair and began to think about a more serious problem. If he wanted to, he could make Peter become Spider-Man in advance. But the problem was that Peter, who was only 11 years old, could maintain his mind after obtaining this extraordinary power. Not to mention that Peter was only a primary school student at the moment, even those adults in their 30s or 40s might not be able to maintain their initial heart after suddenly obtaining great power. If Peter was affected by this power, then what would appear in the future would no longer be the superhero Spider-Man, but the supervillain Spider-Man. After thinking about it, Roger finally gave up on this idea. Just collect Peter's blood. As for his future, it was better not to interfere. After making a decision, Roger decisively displayed Shadow Clone. Bang bang bang. After the two balls of smoke dissipated, the two Shadow Clones appeared in front of him. The matter of collecting Peter's blood and invading Oscorp was very simple, so Roger directly handed it over to Shadow Clone to do. Before the two Shadow Clones set off, he also specially instructed Shadow Clone to do his best to be as secretive as possible. When Shadow Clone left the office with Flying Thunder God technique, Roger picked up the phone on the table again and dialed the internal number of Sky. What's wrong? Is there a problem with the information? When the phone was connected, Sky's voice immediately came through. At the same time, there was a very obvious sound of keyboard typing. Help me look up another person's information. Her name is Gwen Stacy, and her father is a police officer at a police station in New York. His name is George Stacy. She should be a high school student now, but you have to investigate which high school she is in. Roger told all the information she remembered to Sky. Female high school student. After hearing the word high school student, Sky was instantly interested, and the sound of the keyboard typing suddenly disappeared. If nothing goes wrong, it is a high school student. If there is nothing else, you can also investigate middle school or university. When Roger finished speaking, the other side of the line suddenly fell silent. After more than 10 seconds, there was a burst of malicious laughter. Mr. Roger, as the president of a private military company, you let a hacker investigate the information of a female high school student in the middle of the night. Don't you think your behavior is very wretched? And don't forget, you are still the masked man in the Avenger. Your behavior will make your female fans sad. Roger did not speak, because he was sure that no matter how he answered, he would be ridiculed by Sky. However, at your current age, it is normal for you to be interested in young and sexy. After all, with a youthful body full of vitality, which woman can refuse? As if he had discovered a new continent, Sky began to ridicule as much as he liked. Your imagination is too rich. Let's start the investigation now. I hope to seek Gwen's information as soon as possible. After saying that, Roger hung up the phone. Sky should be about the same age as Gwen. One lived according to the normal trajectory of life, while the other dealt with the dark side of the world. If Sky's parents were normal people, she should be considering which university to apply for. Sigh, this is the damned fate. After instructing Sky, Roger used Flying Thunder God technique to return home. Before falling asleep, he deliberately used sensing technique to sense Flying Thunder God's formula on Dr. Connors, as well as the strength of Dr. Connors's life energy. Just as he had expected, Oscorp did not imprison Dr. Connors. Instead, he brought Dr. Connors to a secret research institute in the suburbs. Moreover, judging from the intensity of Dr. Connors's life energy, he had not suffered any inhumane abuse. His vital signs were stable and healthy. After confirming Dr. Connors's current situation, Roger returned to his room and began to sleep. According to their plan, he would not rescue Dr. Connors immediately. The rescue time would be a few days later, and he needed to prepare all the equipment that Dr. Connors needed before the rescue. After a comfortable sleep and a sumptuous breakfast, Roger left home with Flying Thunder God technique. He did not return to the company directly but was directly sent to the warehouse that the Punisher had prepared. This warehouse was originally a temporary base that the Punisher had prepared for himself in Abomination, but after knowing that Roger wanted him to prepare a safe and secret laboratory, he had to share this warehouse. After a busy night, he moved all the equipment and information that Dr. Connors had left in the sewers to the warehouse. And now, in addition to him who had been busy for a night, there were two shadow clones of Roger in the warehouse. 
Peter's blood sample, Richard's mutated spider. The two most important raw materials for restoring Richard's super spider formula were ready. He only needed to prepare the various professional equipment needed by the research institute, and Dr. Connors could start to restore Richard from the super spider equations. These professional equipment were not hard to find, but they needed some more professional channels. And Roger just happened to know someone who had such channels. After calling Tony and paying $50 million, he successfully got what he wanted. Although Tony did not know what he wanted to do, from the professional equipment he bought, Tony could roughly guess his plan. Biotechnology research, and high-end technology in the genetic field. However, Tony did not say anything about it. After all, everyone had their own little hobbies. In his opinion, Roger was not the kind of madman who would destroy the world. Chapter 142, Gwen Stacy It had to be said that Tony's private channel was really useful, and its efficiency was so high that it was shocking. Twelve hours after the payment was paid, Roger received a call from a biological research and development machinery company. Of course, there was no need to carry out this kind of heavy work by himself. Shadow Clone was the best helper. There was nothing wrong with being lazy at all. It was because humans were lazy enough that they had this world of technology. Therefore, Roger enjoyed the feeling of being lazy. After arranging for Shadow Clone to collect the goods, he opened his mailbox and began to browse the information collected by Sky. Gwen Stacy, 17 years old this year, studied at Midtown Science High School and had parents, and two younger brothers. Like Peter Parker, Gwen was also a top student, and all subjects were the highest A. But there was one thing that she was very different from Peter. She was a very popular beautiful top student. She had blonde hair and blue eyes, an outstanding appearance, and a good figure. Although she would only graduate next year, when Sky searched the school database and the principal computer, he found that she had been preordained to be the representative of the next batch of graduates. Compared to her, Peter Parker was like an unknown passerby. He was good-looking, had good grades, and had a good family background. After reading Gwen's information, Roger fell into deep thought. Just like Sky had laughed at yesterday, with his current status, it was very difficult for him to interact with an ordinary female high school student. If he suddenly came to his door, he would most likely be considered a lecherous person with bad intentions. Do you have to go against your conscience and play the role of a sea king who has been bewitched by beauty? Then you have to play hard to get, deceive the heavens and cross the sea, and take advantage of the situation. Finally, you have to guide Gwen to become a spider Gwen, so that the spider Gwen that was originally only able to come out of the parallel universe will come out of this world. This method seems to be quite feasible, but it will seem a bit abnormal. However, if she didn't interact with Gwen, she could only secretly let the modified mutated spider bite her. However, this way, he would appear even more abnormal. Whether he was abnormal or even more abnormal was a problem. After thinking for more than 10 minutes, he decided to temporarily give up on thinking about this problem. Even if he wanted Spider Gwen to come out of this world, he would have to wait for Dr. Connors to reconstruct Richard's super spider equation. It was still too early to think about how to come into contact with Gwen. A few days later, according to the agreement, Roger rescued Dr. Connors from Oscorp's secret research institute. Of course, the person who went to save him was not himself, but a shadow clone who had transformed into Loki. As the initiator of the battle in New York, Loki should not mind taking the blame for him. Doctor, it seems that you have been living quite well these past few days. His complexion was rosy and full of spirit, and Dr. Connors was completely different from when he was in dire straits. Dr. Connors' current image was perfectly in line with his identity as a doctor. They want me to continue to perfect the equations, so they are still polite to me. In addition to letting those amateur third-rate guys study my body. In the beginning, Dr. Connor's tone was still calm, but in the end, Roger felt a strong killing intent from him. These are small problems. When you complete the real equations, you can consider giving them a small gift as a gift. Although Roger had never experienced such a thing as being studied by others, he could understand Dr. Connor's dissatisfaction. As the leader of the cross-species genetic domain, he also possessed extraordinary strength. As a result, he was studied like a little white mouse by people who were far inferior to him. This kind of thing would be unbearable for anyone. I have already helped you get the equipment and equipment you asked me to prepare. Richard's mutated spider and blood sample have also been prepared. If you have nothing else to do, I hope you can start as soon as possible. 
Roger pointed to the temporary laboratory behind him that was not exquisite but professional enough. No problem. As soon as he finished speaking, Dr. Connors went straight into the laboratory and began to reverse engineer Richard's super spider formula. When Dr. Connors began to work seriously, Roger used flying thunder god technique to return to his office. Professional matters had to be handled by professionals. Moreover, with the Punisher here, he did not have to worry about Dr. Connors having any ideas that he should not have. Days passed one after another, and unknowingly, more than half a month had passed. Although there was Peter's blood sample and Richard's mutated spider, it was still not an easy task to reverse the process of restoring Richard. Dr. Connors was indeed a rare talent, but he was not a super genius like Tony and Banner. The progress of the restoration process was much slower than they had expected. According to Dr. Connors himself, there was still critical data that had not been derived yet, and it might take a week or two to complete the final restoration. Regarding this, Roger did not take it to heart. As long as it could be restored, even if the time was a little slower, it did not matter. When Dr. Connors was restoring the equation, Roger did not stay idle and began to guide Gwen. No, he knew her. In order to make the relationship between the two not seem so abrupt, he used a slightly roundabout method. First of all, he found a charity organization. Then, in his own name, he donated a sum of $10 million to this charity organization and set up a charity fund to thank the New York police for their contribution. Finally, with the help of the Public Welfare Organization, a charity party to thank the New York police for resisting Chitori was born just like that. When he was drafting the invitation list, he added several branches to the main thank list, including the branch where Gwen's father, Chief George, was located. Although the process was a little complicated, he finally achieved the goal he wanted and successfully got to know Chief George and his family. When Chief George held his hand and expressed his gratitude to him, a trace of guilt emerged in his heart. If you knew I was after your precious daughter, you wouldn't have any thoughts of thanking me, and maybe even the thought of shooting me in the head. With such a foreshadowing, things will be much simpler later. Although the current Roger was a typical single dog, before he transmigrated, he was a VIP player. The little white dragon in the previous waves was now going to start galloping on horseback again. Chapter 143, Life and Death of S.H.I.E.L.D. There was a saying. If she was not involved in the world, he would take her to see the prosperity of the world. If her heart was old, he would take her to sit on the merry-go-round. This was once Roger's tactical plan to gallop across the battlefield. However, he later discovered that this was not his real trump card. What really made him a little white dragon in the waves was not these seemingly reasonable methods, but a fact that was so simple and rude that it could not be added. Handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. This was the ace weapon that had created his reputation. However, he, who was just about to gallop on his horse, soon met with the smoothness of his life. For a top student who liked knowledge more, his previously always handsome appearance had been challenged by an unprecedented challenge. Although he had specially created several romantic encounters that young girls at Gwen's age would like, the cruel reality gave him a few slaps. He had obvious eight-pack ABS, a thin and muscular body, and a handsome face that didn't lose out to the hot and handsome young man. Not only did his appearance not change, but it was even better than before. In addition, now that he had a lot of money, in terms of external conditions, his charm should have increased by several levels. It shouldn't be. Even if the cultural concept was different, it shouldn't have been such a bleak start. Even the well-informed New York rich and well-known widow had always been obsessed with him, which showed that his charm had always been online. What was the problem? It couldn't be because the top student only liked the top student, right? After seriously thinking for a few minutes, Roger felt that the possibility was quite high. Among all the people, a top student was the most difficult to disguise, especially in front of a real top student. Forget it, I don't want to. I'm not going to pick her up. I just want her to become a superhero Spider Gwen. Time passed day by day. Dr. Connors continued to reverse engineer the program, and Roger continued his daily life. Accepting the commission, completing the commission, eating, accepting the commission, completing the commission, watching a movie. To be honest, Roger was quite satisfied with the current pace of life. The difficulty of the commission was not high and the rewards given by the system were also very reasonable. Chakra volume had also been growing, and the development of wood release, ninjutsu, and genjutsu, Sharingan had also progressed well. 
except for the last key data of the equations that Dr. Connors had been unable to figure out for a long time, everything else was pretty good. Last time, Dr. Connors said that it would only take a week or two to figure out the final key data. However, three months had passed, and he was still deducing the key data. In order to support Dr. Connors's research, his savings dropped at a speed visible to the naked eye, and the bank's savings numbers almost dropped to ten digits. Fortunately, the Punisher and Abomination, who worked hard, made up for a large part of his losses. Just when he thought that this dull day would continue, he suddenly received a call from Carlson. Roger, we have some problems now. If it's convenient for you now, please come over immediately. The address is from Brooklyn. After telling Roger the address, Carlson immediately hung up the phone, or rather, he was forced to hang up. What is this? Do you really think I am a member of the Avengers? Although he said this, he still sent it to the nearest block to the location Carlson had mentioned and then walked towards the address that Carlson had mentioned. However, when he arrived at the block that Carlson had mentioned, he suddenly felt a familiar and unfamiliar aura. This is. The moment he sensed this aura, his face turned extremely cold. Shield really dared to do anything. After displaying body flickering techniques several times, he came to the office building that Carlson had mentioned. Then, he saw a scene that was like hell on earth. This office building was not big, only six stories, and the building age was older than Roger's. From the outside, this was an unremarkable old office building. But as soon as he entered the lobby of the first floor of the office building, he could see one corpse after another, and they were the corpses that died in the way he was familiar with. Wood release, cutting technique. The cause of death of these corpses was the same as his cutting technique. One wooden thorn after another pierced out from the body of the corpse, and blood dyed the floor red. The death was extremely tragic. After taking a few deep breaths and temporarily suppressing the anger in his heart, Roger came to the front of a corpse and then cut off one of the wooden thorns with the kunau. Although from the outside, these wooden thorns were very similar to the wooden thorns he used to cut. But in fact, the two were completely the existences of two worlds. The wooden thorn in his hand now was completely ordinary wood. There was no chakra on it, and it was not like his wood release which had amazing vitality. In terms of hardness, these wooden thorns were far inferior to the wood summoned by wood release. The wood summoned by wood release, even without the supply of chakra, was not an existence that could be easily cut off by ordinary metal blades. The huge difference between these wooden thorns and wood releases wooden thorns was like the difference in physique between Steve Roger and the Hulk. But even so, the existence of these wooden thorns was enough to prove something. When he casually threw away the wooden thorn stained with blood in his hand, he saw Carlson, or rather, Carlson who had almost lost his right hand. Carlson was still wearing the same straight suit, but at this time, his right hand had a huge wound that was more than 20 centimeters long. Although some simple bandages had been bandaged and treated, blood still could not stop gushing out of the bandage. Beside Carlson, there were two figures he was somewhat familiar with. Cavalry Melinda May, and, Grant Ward. You better give me a satisfactory answer. Otherwise, you understand the consequences. Roger's tone was as cold as his expression at this moment. I am also aware of these things today. There was an accident in the experiment and the experimental subject went out of control. S.H.I.E.L.D. will give you a satisfactory answer, but before that, I hope that you can help to deal with the experimental subject that went out of control for the sake of innocent people. Carlson said in a weak tone. The great loss of blood made his face pale, and the intense pain from the wound made obvious sweat appear on his face. What right do you have to raise conditions with me now? Do you think that I don't dare to attack S.H.I.E.L.D.? As soon as he finished speaking, Roger instantly appeared in front of Carlson. His right hand directly grabbed his neck and lifted him up. Chapter 144, A Man Playing With His Wood Both May and Walter had not expected that Roger would actually make a move just like that. The moment Roger lifted Carlson up, they simultaneously took a step forward, preparing to attack Roger at any time to save Carlson. However, before they could make a move, they were suddenly bounced out by Roger's sudden burst of chakra coat. In addition to giving Roger super strong defensive power, a chakra coat could also be used to attack enemies. As long as one's chakra control reached a certain level, it was not difficult to control the release of chakra to attack close enemies. Existence like Prince Ming who hung on the wall could even condense chakra into an arm to directly rub the balls. It's Natasha. Carlson used his intact left hand to grab Roger's right arm and struggled. Before Carlson could finish his words, Roger increased the strength of his right hand, 
turning his face into the color of pig liver. If you lie again, I will break your neck right now. Roger did not know how to read his mind, but he was 100 sure that Carlson was lying. Natasha did have some intimate contact with him, but it was absolutely impossible for Natasha to give him his cells or other genetic samples. Natasha did not have such courage, and Natasha was very clear about what she could do and what she could not do. Among S.H.I.E.L.D., Natasha was definitely the one who knew Roger's bottom line best. She did not have the courage to do such a thing that would directly cause Roger to go berserk, nor would she do it. And if it was provided by Natasha, then S.H.I.E.L.D. might have gotten his cells a few years ago and would not have waited until today to start studying. It's the body of the intruder on the heli carrier. Also, Leviathan's body. Carlson had dealt with Roger quite a few times, so he knew very well that Roger was really angry. If he did not tell the truth, Roger would definitely break his neck without hesitation. S.H.I.E.L.D. did have a confidentiality agreement, but it also depended on what the secret was. When Carlson finished speaking, Roger released his right hand. Carlson once again enjoyed the beauty of being able to breathe freely. The next second, he fell directly to the floor under the influence of gravity. I will deal with the thing outside. When I come back, you and Nick Fury better give me a satisfactory answer. After saying that, Roger left the office building without looking back. S.H.I.E.L.D. was the typical representative of courting death. After the battle in New York, Roger thought that S.H.I.E.L.D. would restrain himself a little. In the end, only a few months had passed and these guys had made new tricks. The last time was because of the infinite energy in the universe Tesseract, but this time it was Wood Release who had his eyes on him. In S.H.I.E.L.D.'s opinion, Roger's Wood Release was easier to control than the universe Tesseract. After all, Roger was a living example. Moreover, the attack and defense abilities that Wood Release displayed were more in line with S.H.I.E.L.D.'s needs. The infinite energy that the universe Tesseract represented could improve the technological level of the entire world, and the prospects of development were also much broader. However, the research difficulty of Tesseract in the universe was obviously much higher than that of Wood Release. Moreover, they had already completely lost Tesseract in the universe. However, Roger's Wood Release was different. This was a power that could be perfectly used on humans. If he grasped Wood Release's secret, S.H.I.E.L.D. could create a team of extraordinaires that belonged to him. The existence of the Avengers made the whole world see how powerful the team of extraordinary people is. After the war in New York, S.H.I.E.L.D. was not the only one who was interested in supernatural beings. After leaving the office building, Roger went directly to the roof of a nearby building and began to use sensing technique magic. He was not sure what kind of life energy characteristics the experimental body of S.H.I.E.L.D. had. He could only determine where the experimental body went by sensing the nearby humans. With his current position as the center, it spread out bit by bit. After spending some time, Roger finally found the so-called uncontrollable experimental body of S.H.I.E.L.D. Unlike what he had imagined, this experimental body did not immediately leave this place. Instead, it directly came to a chain restaurant several blocks away. When Roger came to this chain restaurant and pushed open the door of the restaurant, he immediately smelled a strong bloody smell. When he had sensed this experimental subject before, he had already noticed that something was wrong. In his perception, there was no sign of life in the entire restaurant except for the experimental subject. It was impossible for a chain restaurant to have no guests, and even if there were no guests, there would be at least service personnel. Just as he expected, when he pushed open the restaurant door and entered the restaurant, he saw a scene similar to the lobby on the first floor of the office building. More than ten corpses were scattered all over the restaurant, and the wooden thorns on their bodies clearly stated the cause of their deaths. Beside a table near the bar counter, there was a middle-aged man dressed in white clothes with thick wooden thorns. The middle-aged man looked up at Roger and then looked at the food in front of him. Like a beggar who had been hungry for several days, he stuffed the hamburger in his hand into his mouth crazily. In just a few seconds, the man finished the hamburger in his hand and picked up a steak that had not been cut at all. The man ate crazily and the food that filled the entire table quickly disappeared at a terrifying speed. Roger did not disturb the man's eating. He just silently came to the opposite side of the man and sat down directly. A few minutes later, when the man finished eating the whole table full of food, he raised his head again and sized up Roger in front of him with a strange look. Roger did not speak to the man but just looked at him silently. You are the masked man? right? I have seen the video of you fighting with those aliens. It was a wonderful fight. However, I am stronger than you. As soon as he finished speaking, the man's right hand suddenly attacked Roger. From Roger's angle, 
he could clearly see a wooden thorn gushing out of the man's palm, stabbing towards him like a sharp blade. However, just as the sharp wooden thorn was about to pierce his neck, an arm completely made of wood gushed out from his left shoulder. In just an instant, this wooden arm grabbed the man's right hand. The two palms clenched together like a fist. When the right hand was grabbed by the wooden arm, the man did not hesitate and immediately stretched out his left hand. Just as he raised his left hand, a piece of wood as thick as an arm gushed out from Roger's right shoulder. When the wood that gushed out from Roger's right shoulder came in front of the man, the wood suddenly split into two arms. One of the wooden arms pressed down on the man's left hand, while the other directly pinched his neck. No, you are not strong at all. Chapter 145, Restaurant is not an ideal murder place. I'm stronger than you. He didn't know if he had lost his mind because he had eaten too much. How could he say such words? To Roger, these words were like Yamato saying to a pillar. My wood release was stronger than you. No, this guy couldn't even compare to Yamato. Yamato was an elite ninja of the dark group from the root, and the wood he played was also wood release who was serious, not some fancy tricks. Tell me, what's wrong with your wood? In the beginning, he thought that S.H.I.E.L.D. had gotten his cells or other biological samples from somewhere, and then made a copy of him. But when Carlson talked about Heli Carrier and the dead Leviathan, he was already sure that what S.H.I.E.L.D. had made was not his replica. The wooden thorns that killed the intruders and Leviathan were indeed grown from his body when he performed the cutting technique. But it was absolutely impossible for his cells or biological samples to exist on those wooden thorns. After removing ninjutsu, these wooden thorns did not even have chakra. Say you. The man was just about to say some uncivilized words when he felt a sharp pain in his hands, the pain of being pierced by wooden thorns. Answer whatever I ask. If you can't do it, I will let them experience what they have experienced. Under Roger's control, wooden thorns grew out of the palms of the two wooden arms and directly pierced the man's hands. For those who did not talk about civilization, the best way was to let them immediately experience the consequences of not talking about civilization. Cultural education was not the method that Roger liked. What he liked was to educate others through physical methods. It only needed a few times to be unforgettable. It was Shield's experiment. They made me like this. After being educated once, the man decisively chose to cooperate. Be more specific. However, Roger was not very satisfied with his answer. Therefore, he made the palm of the wooden arm grow more than 10 centimeters of wood thorn. I had superpowers since I was a child. I could control the growth of plants. Later, I used vines to wrap up a few people, and they were caught by shield. I was locked up in a special prison until a few months ago, they brought me out of prison and injected me with a special medicine called seed. At the beginning, I could only grow some grass and vines on my body. They injected me with different seeds several times, and then I could grow wood from my body. But this ability is sometimes very unstable so sometimes these wooden thorns will emerge from my body. The man quickly explained, and then looked at the small wooden thorns in his hand. Your superpower is to control the growth of plants, but the energy required for the growth of plants will not be born out of thin air. How did you do it? Even when he used wood release, he needed to consume a lot of chakra to achieve the effect of controlling wood or letting wood grow. And the man in front of me did not have any special energy in his body. Just eat something. After being hit by the so-called seed medicine by them, my appetite became better and better, and my physical strength also became a lot better. Every time I let the wood grow out of my body, it will consume a part of my physical strength. As long as I still have physical strength, I can continue to grow wood. From the palm of the hand grew wood, then inserted the wood into the body of others, and finally let these wooden thorns grow out of the body of others, which was also taught by them. However, after I watched your video later, I realized that they were also learning from you. Let me tell you, Shield's people are really not good people. I think you should be like me, killing them all. That way, they would be afraid of you and would not have any ideas about you. He did not know if this guy was a chatterbox, or if he felt that the current Roger would not continue to hurt him, he began to chatter and even began to give advice to Roger. Since I'm so cooperative, you can't kill me, can you? And we can barely be considered as the same kind, can't we? Yes, S.H.I.E.L.D. is not a good person. But, you are not a good person either. After saying that, Roger did not continue to talk nonsense with this man. At the same time, his three wooden arms grew a wooden thorn. When these wooden thorns entered the body of this man, they grew out again from the body of this man, 
causing a painful death effect similar to the cutting technique. This man never thought that Roger would actually really make a move, and he used this kind of method that he was extremely familiar with. It turned out that it was really painful to have wooden thorns growing in the body. You want to take revenge on S.H.I.E.L.D., this is no problem, but you should not make a move on the people in the restaurant. As soon as he finished speaking, Roger and the man disappeared from their seats. When he used Flying Thunder God technique to leave, the sirens outside the restaurant became clearer. After bringing the corpse back to the office building for half an hour, Roger finally saw Nick Fury. Along with him, there was also Steve Roger who was wearing a shield, and Hawkeye who was wearing a bow. Roger, this time. Nick Fury had just opened his mouth when he was interrupted by Roger. You only have one chance. Think about it before you speak. Steve Roger and Hawkeye did not know what had happened. They only received an emergency notification from Nick Fury and then rushed here on the Quinjet. After hearing Roger's cold tone, they finally understood why Nick Fury insisted that the two of them come together. We are indeed planning to replicate the ability to control wood on you through experiments. I do not deny this. I was the one who ordered the experiment to be conducted. I know that this is against our original agreement. So if you want to make a move, I understand. However, I don't think my order is wrong. We won the Battle of New York, but it was a victory belonging to the Avengers, not S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. needs power. Only with power can S.H.I.E.L.D. protect the world. Nick Fury said with a look of righteousness, not feeling that there was anything wrong with S.H.I.E.L.D.'s way of doing things. Ha 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 ha. As expected of S.H.I.E.L.D., who took the responsibility of protecting the world, he was always so righteous. You never felt that your way of doing things was wrong. You always felt that the world needed your protection to be safe. Who do you think you are? Do you really think you are a righteous messenger who protects peace? Roger stood up and went straight to Nick Fury. Chapter 146, Fuck Around and Find Out If he wasn't a fool, he would be able to tell that the atmosphere was very strange. When Roger came in front of Nick Fury, Steve Roger also took a step forward and said to Roger, If you have something to say, you can say it slowly. There is no need to make a move. Steve Roger didn't know Roger very well, but he had seen the appearance of Roger in the previous battle. Therefore, he was very sure that once Roger started to move, no one here would be able to stop him. Unlike Captain America who took the initiative to move forward, Hawkeye silently took a step back and then clenched the recurve bow in his hand. Hawkeye was a very pure agent, so in his opinion, Roger was obviously making a big fuss out of nothing. Although Nick Fury was not a good person, in general, what he did was protect this world. This was what Hawkeye was thinking at this time. The thought of a high-level agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Roger did not speak, only looking at Nick Fury with cold eyes. And Nick Fury did not show the slightest sign of giving in, standing straight in front of Roger. We didn't copy your cells, nor did we make your clones, we just developed a new type of drug with the wood you left. If you feel that our actions have offended you, we can compensate you appropriately. At this moment, Carlson's voice suddenly sounded. After dealing with the injury on his arm, Carlson walked in. May and Walter were still by his side. Behind him was a 20-man S.H.I.E.L.D. Special Squad. The fully armed S.H.I.E.L.D. Special Squad. Roger ignored Carlson, and he would never accept S.H.I.E.L.D.'s so-called compensation. If he accepted S.H.I.E.L.D.'s compensation, then S.H.I.E.L.D. would only become more and more excessive in the future. This time they dared to have ideas about him, would release, then next time they would dare to have ideas about his chakra. In the end, they even dared to directly have ideas about him. Some things, once they gave in, they could no longer be redeemed. In order to prevent this situation from happening, the best way was to cut off their hands once they had the intention to reach out. If you dare to stretch out your left hand, I will cut off your left hand. If you dare to stretch out too, I will cut a pair. If you should not touch something, you absolutely must not touch it. If you should not have any ideas, you better not touch them. Don't you want this power of mine? No problem, I will satisfy you. Roger finally spoke. His tone was very calm, but everyone could tell that he did not mean to share his power with S.H.I.E.L.D. Just as Roger finished speaking, Nick Fury's right hand grabbed the pistol at his waist. However, before he could pull the pistol out of the holster, he felt a strong pain that pierced his heart. Asterisk chi chi asterisk. In an instant, Dozens of wooden thorns more than 10 centimeters long grew from his right arm, piercing his skin, destroying his muscles, and breaking his bones. When Nick Fury's right hand became unrecognizable, P. 
people found that Roger's left hand had pressed on his shoulder at some point. This is the power you want. As soon as Roger finished speaking, the wooden thorns on Nick Fury's right arm grew again. Bang! The wildly growing wooden thorns instantly broke through Nick Fury's entire right arm. Broken flesh and blood splattered everywhere. Just as Nick Fury's right arm was completely broken by the wooden thorn, a light blue light visible to the naked eye appeared in front of Roger, blocking the splashing flesh and blood. Crazy, really crazy. Although everyone knew that this matter would be difficult to resolve. However, no one had expected that Roger would destroy Nick Fury's entire right arm so decisively. That was Nick Fury, the director of the world's most powerful secret service organization, S.H.I.E.L.D. Without needing anyone to give the order, after discovering that Roger had used such a cruel method to destroy Nick Fury's right arm, the special squad soldiers behind Carlson immediately raised their weapons and aimed their guns at Roger. As long as Nick Fury or Carlson gave the order, they could immediately shoot Roger into a hornet's nest. It had to be said that the thoughts of these special squad soldiers were beautiful. But they did not realize what kind of existence they were facing right now. The moment they raised their hands, Roger casually glanced at them. Then, these special squad soldiers fell to the ground as if they had lost their souls. Genjutsu, Sharingan. A group of ordinary people simply couldn't resist Genjutsu who had the Sharingan. In just an instant, these special forces soldiers fell into the world of Genjutsu built by Roger, and they all lost consciousness. From now on, the agreement is void. If you want to take revenge or regain face, feel free to come over. I, Roger, will accept all of them. After saying that, Roger no longer paid attention to Nick Fury. He did not even pay attention to Captain America, who was ready to fight and Hawkeye aimed his bow and arrow. He directly used Flying Thunder God technique to leave this place. The good relationship with S.H.I.E.L.D. had completely ended from this moment on. However, Roger did not have any regrets. S.H.I.E.L.D. was indeed very strong, and could even be said to be the strongest secret service organization at present. But so what? If it was really to the extent that it would not end until one of them died, he could guarantee that the one who died would definitely be S.H.I.E.L.D. In terms of fighting, he had never been afraid of anyone. Although he had destroyed Nick Fury's right arm, in the next few days, Roger did not suffer any attacks from S.H.I.E.L.D. He did not even deliberately make things difficult for him on the surface. As the days passed, everything seemed to have returned to its original state. However, a month later, he suddenly received a black business card with an octopus-shaped logo printed on it. The logo on the card was similar to that of an octopus. He was not unfamiliar with it. This was the symbol of Hydra. This name card had suddenly appeared in his office. Sky and Erica did not know who had sent this name card. Even the CCTV had just happened to have a small accident during that period of time, and no useful pictures had been taken. What a boring display of desire. Of course, Roger knew why Hydra would send a business card over in this way. It was simply to tell him that they were powerful and could enter and leave his office at will. In this regard, his answer was to directly throw this business card into the trash can. Love does not appear, just an organization with little strength, what are you pretending to be a big tail wolf? After dealing with this insignificant episode, Roger left the office with Flying Thunder God technique and went to Dr. Connor's experiment. After the date of the plan was delayed again and again, Dr. Connors finally pushed out the last key data and successfully restored Richard's super spider formula. Chapter 147, Lizard and Abomination After sending it to the laboratory, Roger did not go directly to Dr. Connors. Instead, he came to Frank the Punisher. Prepare a professional anti-theft device and a brand new secret surveillance system. The equipment that the company is running now is not good. Some cockroaches have mixed in. Professional things should be left to the professionals to do. And Frank the Punisher was such a professional talent. In terms of combat strength, the Punisher might not be as good as Abomination and Blonsky. However, in terms of practicality, Abomination could not compare to the Punisher. What was a professional tool? The Punisher was it. No problem, give me one day. Although the Punisher only knew how to fight and kill most of the time, he had many special channels that Roger did not have. It was not difficult for him to get a set of professional eavesdropping and monitoring equipment. After giving instructions to the Punisher, Roger found Dr. Connors and planned to see the final version that Dr. Connors had developed. Richard is really a genius. He used a specific gene to lock onto the equation. It is perfect. When Roger arrived, Dr. Connors took out a few mutated spiders and pulled open the sleeve of his right hand. 
I improved my own formula according to his formula. The effect is better than I imagined. My right hand has really recovered. It is not a short recovery, it is a real recovery. The entire structure of the biological tissue of the right hand has completely stabilized and will not disappear because of the disappearance of the serum effect. Dr. Connors excitedly waved his right hand at Roger, his face showing a childlike happy expression. The dream he had longed for for a lifetime had finally been realized. This kind of wonderful feeling could not be described with words. I saw it, but you know that this is not what I want. After spending so much time and money, what Roger wanted was not some serum that could repair broken limbs. What he wanted was the serum of the super spider, the kind that could make people turn into Spider-Man. Of course, I have prepared what you want, but there is one thing I need to tell you in advance. Because Richard's equation was based on genes, this equation that he had developed had not gone through normal human experiments. I have conducted some animal experiments, and the results of the experiments are similar to the data calculated. But humans are different from animals after all. I don't know whether the serum can take effect on the human body or if there will be any sequelae after it takes effect. After saying that, Dr. Connors took out a transparent box that was one meter square. The mouse in the middle is the experimental body injected with super spider serum. Although it won't spray silk like a real spider, its strength, speed, sensitivity, cell vitality, self-healing, and other data have a qualitative improvement. If it is released, it can become the king of mice in the entire New York. No, it is the king of mice in the whole world. Dr. Connors said excitedly. Looking at the living body of the white mouse in the transparent box, Roger said slowly, I gave you a blood sample last time. Did you get the matching formula? Of course, the blood sample that Roger mentioned was not his blood sample, but Gwen's. He was not interested in becoming Spider-Man. Moreover, compared to Spider-Man's superpower, weren't ninjutsu and bloodline limit more fragrant? It's done, but it's still the same sentence. This serum is specially matched with genes, so it hasn't been conducted human experiments yet. I can't be sure what effect it will have in the end. Although Dr. Connors did not know who the blood sample belonged to, he knew that it was a female blood sample. According to normal circumstances, there was no problem with this serum. After all, Dr. Connors only modified the part of the matching genes on the surface into another person. However, science experiments had a buff of losing control of the experiment. Especially those who had not yet experienced human experiments. For example, a green big guy was born in this way. Is there any way to skip the partial confirmation effect of human experiments, or directly use the experimental data to simulate it? It was immoral to take Gwen directly to adventure so he would never do this before confirming the serum effect. Yes. In my previous laboratory, there was an instrument that could simulate biological experiments on a computer. I mean the laboratory in Oscorp is not the one in the sewer. But even if I use that instrument to simulate, I still need the detailed data of the experimental mark. The more detailed, the better. And the simulation is always just experimental data, and it can't represent the real results of human experiments. The simulated experimental data is always just a simulation effect, and no one can guarantee whether the real experimental results will be the same as the simulation results. I will deal with the problem of the instruments and data. You continue to check the equations. I don't want any problems with the equations. Do you understand? There was only one Gwen in this world, which also meant that he only had one chance. If the experiment failed, his plan to create Spider Gwen would also fail. After talking to Dr. Connors for a few minutes, Roger returned to the office with Flying Thunder God technique. He didn't need to do it by himself to get the experimental simulation equipment from Oscorp. This kind of heavy work was enough for Abomination. At most, he would give Abomination a few more Shadow Clones, which would be enough to face any situation. Three days later, the famous Oscorp building was subjected to a serious violent invasion. A large number of laboratories were destroyed, including the lab of Dr. Connors, the former person in charge of the cross-species lab. When Dr. Connors saw Abomination with the experimental simulation instrument, his eyes were not on the experiment instrument, but on Abomination. This body, this power, this was simply the perfect masterpiece of the creator. In the eyes of others, Abomination, who looked like a monster, was like an angel to Dr. Connors. Is this reason why he is not interested in my lizard serum? But compared to this beautiful creature in front of him, my lizard serum is indeed nothing. The abomination had never seen Dr. Connors before. After seeing Dr. Connors walking towards him with a longing face and gently stroking his arms, 
he suddenly had a feeling of using his hands directly. The instrument smashed Dr. Connor's thoughts. No, I have to endure. This guy was also someone that Roger found. If he was killed, Roger would be very angry. However, this guy's abnormal behavior really made people very unhappy. Chapter 148, Nine-Headed Snake Abomination's tolerance led to Dr. Connor's insatiable desire. He saw that after Dr. Connor's stroked Abomination's right arm, he was still not satisfied. He then looked at Abomination's steel-like strong abdominal muscles. No, I can't stand it anymore. This damn pervert, I... According to Abomination's style in the past, he would give Dr. Connors a hard punch at this time and let him know that there were some things that could not be touched. But after thinking about Roger, Abomination had no choice but to suppress the anger in his heart. When Dr. Connors' right hand was about to touch Abomination's abdominal muscles, Abomination decisively took a few steps back and then placed the experimental equipment in his hand in front of him. Once the delivery is complete, leave immediately. Without any hesitation, Abomination turned and left. As he strode away, Abomination did not forget to shake his right hand that had been touched by Dr. Connors. Disgusting, extremely disgusting. After watching Abomination leave, Dr. Connors stuck out his tongue and licked his lips like a lizard. Fortunately, Abomination had already left this place. If he saw this scene, even with Roger's suppression, he would still be unable to resist beating up Dr. Connors. At worst, he would just be taught a lesson by the wooden people. At this time, Roger did not know what was happening in the laboratory, because there was now a guy who appeared to be S.H.I.E.L.D., but in fact, it was Hydra who had come to his office. Hydra was originally waiting for Roger to take the initiative to contact him, but they never thought that the name card they had carefully prepared was directly thrown into the trash can by Roger. After waiting for a few days without any results, they had no choice but to change their plans and take the initiative to visit. Sitting in front of Roger now is Brock Rumlow, Captain of S.H.I.E.L.D. Rapid Response Special Forces. Of course, compared to this identity on the surface, his other identity was a little more famous. The crossbones of a Hydra. You dare to use your identity as a Hydra to look for me. It seems that you are planning to end your hibernation. It was not the first time that Roger had dealt with Rumlow, they had met a few years ago. However, at that time, Rumlow was still an ordinary special squad member. At that time, the special squad that Rumlow was in received a mission to capture Roger. The result of the mission was very obvious. Rumlow and the others had failed, and they had lost nearly half of their manpower. It was also because of their failure that the Black Widow Natasha had personally taken action later. Nick Fury is already old. He can't see the future development trajectory of the world, just like how he can't see your authenticity. Since he dared to use his identity as a nine-headed snake to find Roger, Rumlow was naturally prepared for everything. The worst result would be that he would end his ambush at Shield's place. At this point, even if he ended his ambush ahead of time, it would no longer matter. Hydra had already prepared most of the things he needed to prepare. As for the rest, they were just some extra prizes. Tell me, what does the famous Hydra want from me? I don't think this small private military company of mine can help Hydra. Hydra did most of the spies, even the assassinations were only targeted at ordinary targets. This kind of mission, Hydra could easily handle it himself there was no need to find him. No, you look down on yourself. Not to mention you are the masked man, just some things in your hands are very valuable. For example, Abomination, Blonsky, the Punisher, and the steel armor with energy. And as far as we know, the lizardman Dr. Connors who gave Oscorp a headache a while ago is now in your hands. Roger was not surprised that Hydra could find out the information about Abomination and the Punisher. After all, they often appeared in public. But the fact that Hydra could investigate the matter of Lizard and Mark III was a little surprising. Ever since he rescued Dr. Connors from Oscorp, Dr. Connors had never left the secret laboratory. As for Mark III, he had not even worn it once. Even S.H.I.E.L.D.'s people did not know that he had a set of self-powered Mark III. Interesting. Although you said so much, if I'm not wrong, what you want should be Tony's steel armor. Out of the four things that Rumlow had suggested, the only thing that suited the Hydra the most was Iron Man's steel armor. Especially the battle in New York, allowed the entire world to see the power of the steel armor. However, since the incident with the Iron Overlord, Tony's protection of the iron suit has been improved by several levels. Apart from Colonel Rhodes wearing a set of Mark II and modifying it into a steel patriot, only Roger had a set of Mark III. However, 
only he and Tony knew about this matter. What we want the most right now is indeed the steel armor, but we are also very interested in the biological technology of Abomination, the Punisher, and the Lizardman. If you are willing to give us the steel armor to study for a few days or provide these three biological technologies, we will give you an unimaginable great return. Although Hydra had never formally contacted Roger before, this did not mean that they knew nothing about Roger. Since Roger suddenly appeared in New York a few years ago, especially after he beat back Shield several times, Hydra began to secretly investigate his information. On the surface, Roger seemed to be a person who did not pursue money, power, and beauty. However, after careful analysis by those psychologists inside Hydra, they could basically confirm that Roger was only relatively good at controlling. Simply put, he was not pure of heart and had few desires, he was just a little stuffy. Hydra was not worried that Roger was greedy for money and lustful, because they had enough strength to satisfy Roger. This was also one of the reasons why Lang Muluo was so straightforward. Just state your price, if you can't satisfy it, Hydra will lose. It seems that you are very confident. It is impossible for me to give you the steel armor. This is a matter of principle. As for the biological technology you mentioned, it is not impossible to give you one. However, I am afraid that you will not be able to give me what I want. Although he did not know what was wrong, which led to Hydra thinking that the Punisher's ability to survive was some kind of biological technology, Roger did not intend to explain this to them. Just say it. What are you thinking of? Rumlow said confidently. I want the obelisk, which is the first 0.84 item in shield. Chapter 149, Roger Who Blew Himself Up Obelisk? What was that? As the captain of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s quick response special forces, Rumlow certainly knew what this code name meant. But the problem was, he had never heard of this thing called the obelisk at all. Do you only want the obelisk? If it's just a 0.84, I don't think this is a problem at all. Although he didn't know what the obelisk was, Rumlow didn't think it was a big problem. Isn't it just a 0.84 piece? Just give it to him. First, this is not an ordinary 0.84 item, it is the first 0.84. Secondly, I think it would be better for you to report it to the person you met up with. It is not as simple as you think it is. Looking at Rumlow's indifferent expression, Roger knew that this guy did not know what the obelisk meant at all. In that case, I can report it to the person in front of me. However, I want to know, if we give the obelisk to you, what can you give us? I can lend abomination to you for a few days, or give you five of Dr. Connor's lizard serum. There was no need to think about Mark III and the Punisher. One was a matter of principle, and the other involved some of his secrets. Even if they handed the Punisher over to Hydra, they might not be able to figure out anything, but it was always right to be careful. Only these two. Rumlow or Hydra, what they wanted most was Tony's steel armor. If they had Tony's steel armor, with their level of technology and research, they would be able to research many good things in reverse. Tony's steel armor was not just a weapon, but a systematic product of technology. The weapon system, Power system, flight system, operation system, arc reactor. Any system on the steel armor had an incomparably broad application. If used properly, the steel armor could even directly improve the overall technology level of the Hydra. Now we can only choose one. If you have more things that interest me, I can give you two directly. Rumlow left Roger's company. Although he did not get the steel combat suit he wanted the most, Abomination's research opportunity and the lizard serum could be considered a good harvest. Of course, all of this was on the premise that they could get the obelisk. After Rumlow left, Roger picked up the phone on the table and called Sky and Erica into the office. From today on, Erica, you are responsible for teaching Sky combat. Erica did not have any objections to Roger's arrangement and directly agreed. However, Erica's agreement did not mean Sky would agree. I don't want to. I am a hacker. I don't need to learn to fight. Sky directly refused Roger's proposal. You have no right to refuse, unless you can beat me or Erica. In addition, learning fighting is also let you see your parents as soon as possible. Although Sky's hacking skills were good, Quake was the role she should take in the future. When he asked Hydra for the obelisk, he had already made a decision to let Sky awaken as an inhuman in advance. Although he was still a little dissatisfied, Sky still agreed in the end. As long as he could find his parents, not to mention learning combat, even if he let her join S.H.I.E.L.D., it would be no problem. Maybe it was because Hydra didn't get the obelisk, 
or they thought it was more valuable than what Roger had given them. After Rumlow left, Hydra never contacted Roger again. Roger didn't take it to heart. The obelisk could allow Sky to awaken as an inhuman, but it was not the only way. Even without the obelisk, he had other ways to obtain the original crystal. Hydra no longer contacted Roger, and Roger was too lazy to bother with these guys who were destined to fail. A week later, Roger received news from Dr. Connors. The spider serum suitable for Gwen has completed thousands of simulation tests without any abnormal reactions that should not have occurred. After using Flying Thunder God technique to come to the laboratory, Roger took a syringe that was only the size of a finger from Dr. Connors. Although I have passed enough simulation tests, I still have to say one thing. Use it carefully. Roger nodded, then left the laboratory and returned to his office. After returning to the office, Roger sat in his chair without saying a word. After more than ten minutes, he called Gwen. He had to face what he had to face. An hour later, in a Chinese restaurant that had just opened for a few months, Roger saw Gwen, who was dressed up especially delicately. Why did you suddenly invite me to dinner? Gwen asked. Roger helped Gwen pull out a chair, then returned to her seat and said, Let's eat first. We'll talk after we finish eating. Gwen looked at Roger suspiciously, and then she realized that there were only two guests in the restaurant. After enjoying a pure Chinese meal with Gwen, Roger said to Gwen, I asked you out tonight because I wanted to tell you my true identity. Besides the president of the internet company and the logistics company, I have other identities. As soon as Roger finished speaking, Gwen replied, I know. Your real identity is actually the president of a private military company. My father secretly investigated your identity and even asked me to stay away from people like you. Is there a mistake somewhere? This is not what I want to say. Um. Yes, I have a private military company, but this is not the point. After a few seconds, Roger continued, Do you still remember the Avengers I told you before? Captain America, Iron Man, Masked Man. I remember. You also asked me what I think of these superheroes. Gwen's tone became a little excited. For girls of her age, superheroes and the like had their own charm. I am the masked man. Roger said directly. You? The masked man? If not for the fact that Roger had a serious expression on his face, Gwen would have thought that he was joking. Yes, I am the masked man. After saying that, Roger directly used summoning techniques psychic ability to summon three Megatama mask and Gunbei Uchiwa. These things should be more or less enough to prove my identity. When he saw Roger use a strange method to call out the mask and Gunbei Uchiwa, Gwen was stunned. Although after the Avengers were exposed, there were many people in the world who imitated them. Gwen had seen more than once those imitators with the fan on their backs and masks wandering around the streets. However, they were only imitators after all, not the real masked man. Roger was the real masked man. Chapter 150, I Need You Gwen looked at the mask and fan that Roger had put aside and silently sized up Roger for a while. Then, she asked, Can you fly? No. Roger replied directly. But when you are fighting aliens, you can fly. Gwen pointed to the regiment fan on the side and continued to ask. The only thing that can fly is the regiment fan. I just stepped on it. I can't fly myself. Although the development of the matter was somewhat different from what he had expected, he still patiently explained. Don't rush, impatient can't eat hot tofu. No, why should I eat hot tofu? Then can you fly for me to see? Gwen seemed to be particularly interested in the question of flying. Here. Although there were only the two of them in the restaurant, this was obviously not a good place to fly. It's fine to go outside. Although Roger didn't know what Gwen wanted to do, he didn't mind fulfilling her little request. Outside the restaurant was a busy street. It was not a suitable place to fly, so Roger directly brought Gwen to the roof of the restaurant. How did you know that you could come up here? Why is there no waiter in the restaurant? Gwen asked doubtfully after following Roger to the roof. I bought this building. The restaurant is also mine. I asked them to get off work early. After saying that, Roger directly threw the ball fan in his hand out. Under his control, the ball fan that was thrown out drew a beautiful arc in the air and flew back to him. Do you want to experience it? Roger went straight to the fan and turned to ask Gwen. Yes. Gwen excitedly came to the fan. Before she could turn around, she was picked up by Roger. If you stand like this, it will be easy to fall. 
After saying that, Roger directly controlled the fan to fly out. In order to take care of Gwen's feelings, Roger did not allow the fan to display its maximum flying speed. Instead, it was like a surfboard in the sea, constantly streaking across the roofs of buildings. Although Roger could not carry people around the building like Spider-Man, he could do an even more exciting flying experience. Ever since the fan began to fly, Gwen could not help but hug Roger's neck. His nervous appearance was like a person who was afraid of heights riding the most exciting vertical roller coaster. Do you want to experience something more exciting? After flying between the buildings for a few minutes, Roger asked Gwen. Although Gwen did not answer Roger, she nodded firmly. Since Gwen wants to play, then let's play with her. The fan began to fly high into the sky, and the buildings in New York began to shrink rapidly. At the same time, Roger wrapped himself and Gwen in his chakra coat. To him, this height would not have any effect on him. But Gwen was different. She was just an ordinary person. After flying for a few thousand meters, the fan stopped climbing and floated in the air. Just as Gwen was about to ask Roger, Roger suddenly jumped forward and left the fan. Under the influence of gravity, Roger and Gwen began to fall rapidly in a free-falling posture. Accompanying them was the astonishing frequency of Gwen's screams. Ah! The real extreme bungee jumping could be unforgettable after experiencing it once. The small New York started to grow bigger and the buildings that were originally bright became clearer and clearer. Looking at the ground getting closer and closer, Gwen's hands wrapped around Roger's neck even more tightly. 500 meters, 300 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters. Just as Gwen closed his eyes nervously, the strong sense of weightlessness disappeared. You can open your eyes now. After hearing Roger's voice, Gwen opened his eyes and looked around in confusion. Just as he was about to fall to the ground, Roger used Flying Thunder God technique to send him to the roof of a building with Flying Thunder God's formula, safely ending this high-altitude bungee jumping trip. Do superheroes usually play so crazily? After being put down by Roger, Gwen patted his chest with lingering fear. Bungee jumping was already something exciting enough, let alone this kind of high-altitude, terrifying, and completely unprotected extreme jump. It's okay. What we usually do might be a little more exciting than this. He had just experienced it and had played what he needed to play, so it was time to get to the point. Actually, I asked you out tonight to tell you my real identity. There is another thing. After that, Roger took out the syringe that was only the size of a finger. What is inside is a type of strengthening serum, and it is strengthening serum specially made for you. After the injection, you will have strength, speed, agility, and some super senses that you can't imagine. Simply put, after the injection, you will also become a superhero. Roger raised the syringe in his hand and said seriously. You can become a superhero by injecting it. Yes. Just as Roger finished speaking, Gwen raised her right hand, wanting to take away the syringe in her hand. Wait a minute, there are some things I need to tell you in advance. This serum is specially made for you, so it has not gone through any human experiments. You have also been an intern at Oscorp for a period of time, so you should understand what this means. Moreover, once you become a superhero, it will also mean that you will say goodbye to the normal life of ordinary people. You may think that becoming a superhero is a particularly cool thing now, but the truth may be completely different from what you imagine. I originally planned to secretly inject you, but I still think that you should make this decision yourself. After confirming that Gwen understood everything, Roger handed her the syringe that could change Gwen's fate. Why did you create such a serum for me? Or... Why do you want me to become a superhero? After receiving the syringe from Roger, Gwen looked up at Roger and asked seriously. Because I need you. I need a superhero Gwen. Roger replied honestly. You need me. Yes. I need you. A smile appeared on Gwen's face when she heard Roger's affirmative answer. Then, she directly inserted the syringe in her hand into her left arm. I believe in you. Roger thought that Gwen would seriously think for a while before making a decision, but Gwen gave him a direct answer with her actions.